Welcome back to another Red Wagon Inn, and look who we got back for this Red Wagon Inn. We actually have six players this night. <laughs> Welcome back, Bree. Oh my god. Oh my god, I ruined it again. There's no audio. I'm so sorry. There's no audio. <laughs> there was audio for me, but not for you all. So, I mean, I think that was fine. I didn't know that was your... <laughs> we were trying back. Crazy. Hi, guys. It wouldn't be a red wagon in otherwise. Right. This is, this is Miss Zoe. Look at little Zoe. Cutest baby ever. I'm going to oh, probably make her all mad, and then she's going to go back with her dad and be his problem. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Get the inspo first, and then give it back. Right? You get your point of inspiration, because that's a cute ass little baby. <laughs> all right, Zoe's going to say bye. Bye. Bye, Ben. I'm so ready for Bree to roll for recap. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Bree says is cute. I can give you a recap. It's just not going to be of what you've been doing. <laughs> Suddenly, the team sees babies. Babies everywhere. <laughs> so many babies. So Wait, many more than what? <laughs> Sleepless nights. What? <laughs> <laughs> so then the party was up at 3 a.m. The baby was crying. I said, please, God, go change their diaper. <laughs> Salt looked at me and said, do I have to? <laughs> yes. Everyone has five points of exhaustion now uh, for Bree's recap. <laughs> Dude, I just spit oh. water all over my monitor. I need to go get a Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Water. Well, while he gets <laughs> Kleenex for his water <laughs> spit. Uh, Bree is back, everybody. So glad to have Bree back. Glad that they had such a healthy little baby girl and was so cute. So thanks for coming back, Summer. Um, does anybody have anything that they specifically need to shill before I start showing some pretty rad things for the art and fan art of this week beautiful the, oh. the hoodie giveaway thing starting next week <gasps> um i didn't get things all ready and set up um but yeah so next week red wagon in, i'm going to show off the cool hoodie um so and then it's going to be once the the giveaway starts on the tuesday it's going to be a month for everyone to submit uh, your red wagon in fan art and then everybody on cast can be like whoa what are, what are we like and somebody's going to get a sweet old how how hoodie so yes. yeah Please be looking out on the Red Wagon Inn Instagram and Twitter, too, because we're going to show that. And so am I on mine, because I definitely want to see that hoodie. I'll right, sure. do it, too. And, and we'll all just do it. <laughs> <laughs> or free. <laughs> well, we've got Aww. a few different pieces. <laughs> Guys, I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Have you? <laughs> Let's this is why Wednesdays were so good, Brie. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Uh, we've got some art from a bunch of different people and a bunch of different things to show off. Um, so first up is Heavenly Aristocratic, which did the pinup version of Rarbert, which 100% inspired. We, <laughs> I really want to make a pinup version of all the characters for a 2022 calendar at the end of the year as like merch with everyone in just the most suggestive <laughs> of poses, like a fireman <laughs> calendar. <laughs> Can we just have Rin in multiple different forms for <laughs> that month? Yeah. That way it's not anybody How uncomfortable. Rin did all have? of it. <laughs> How I will have nothing but his mask on. <laughs> he just holds the mask like a leaf. Yeah, exactly. I'll have my tail in a specially placed position. <laughs> we and, also and, and this summer, is the end of love love <laughs> summer and zania both have um full jumpsuits on and are completely covered beekeepers outfits sometimes that's even sexier <laughs> <laughs> uh we have some amazing art again from mira one is rubber as a muffin since that was the fan question yes. last time <laughs> this one's really great if i were any food i'd be a muffin um, which, by the way, the fan question didn't get added this time because uh, down at the bottom, the little fun fact thing had to change because I messed it up. Uh, that's why it had to change because uh, now it shows the name uh, from the person who made our song, which I will also get down to here in just a little bit. But we have another piece of art of Mira for oh, Salt. Uh -huh. They're like realistic versions of art, which is always awesome. Mira, absolutely killing it's beautiful. it. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. Uh, and then Drew can explain a little bit more of Jason's test print. This is the first print of Team, correct? Correct. 
Sorry, I'm noticing that uh, highlighted text isn't going up. Um, oh. so oh, that's probably with on that me. being said. Shoot, I I can fix right. that, but it'll take a second. I'll fix while you fix it. I'll talk. Okay. So Jason over at an awesome place of D and D two fourteen dice. I talk to him every day. I don't know go. why I would forget. <laughs> anyway, the flames in my background right now. <laughs> 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 Anyways, Jason over there uh, is doing something awesome for charity, and Jason is having the entire cast made STLs and having them uh, be printed out. The STLs are going to be for sale, and uh, some bigger ones are going to be for sale, too. Like I said, everything goes to charity uh, when that starts going, so it's really awesome to see that uh, that's moving along like it is. Absolutely. And the uh, highlighted comments is now fixed because that's why we had to swap over. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, yay, charity. <laughs> also, uh, yeah. we have a bit of art from uh, Safi from last week, uh, which is how with the milk honey buns that we created, which I think is really cool. Um, oh, and everyone so good. has two FPS now, but that's fine. Uh, then we also have something really cool. So one, if you heard the song, that's now our pseudo official Red Wagon Inn theme song <gasps> from Words Mythologic. Uh, I think I'm saying for it right. Free? She is awesome. Uh, it's for free. Uh, yeah, it, it's absolutely super rad. And they even made us a victory sound uh, thing, which I will play in chat right now for people to hear. It's the only time it's ever going to be played. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Really would have been more appropriate to make a death song, but uh, they, <laughs> mm -hmm. they said the victory sound is based off of like Final Fantasy victories, which I think it's really awesome. Um, but then they also so made cool. something really cool, which is a poem. Uh, and there's a few things <gasps> that I'm going to read on it, and I hope that people notice some things. Um, so, oh. to the god of gossip and chatter, we give this recitation. To the endless roiling rill of voices in every pitch and countless fickle faces, we ask the speaker of words that scatter to impart their contemplation, that we may know what will foes help us best and path enrich and guide us in all places. Patron of water that flows, bestower of reputation, keeper of truths and lies, we beseech the lightest tremble or twitch of your countless hands for any. We ask to hear what the murmuring stream knows for your whispered proclamation, the capricious collection of crowded eyes, and the insight held by all of which the wisdom of the many. I thought it was a rad poem. Capricious collection of crowded eyes. And one thing that they said is it is 20 lines, specifically for a D20. A uh, couple of references to things in there are rivers, what? like streams, possibly. Yeah, so what you're saying cool. is I need to make what? a D twenty and each side has one of these lines. Yeah. It's very, okay, it's very tiny, about 50 but do mils, it. Okay, yeah. Right, we, we'll do it. We'll make it happen. Make it a basketball size. That'd be great. And is is this gonna be our, our biggest uh D twenty, is it? Our biggest D twenty <laughs> yet. <laughs> Roll to poem. Right. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think that's it, unless anybody else has anything that they want uh, to show. Yeah. Yeah. What are we giving away this week, right? Oh, shoot. What are we giving away? Is that going to be... <laughs> oh, three? Sure, Two you things. can put me up first, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take the bullet. Good. Uh, I was just making sure that Alex knew what we were doing. So, Alex, tell us what we're giving away. I never know what we're doing. <laughs> We're giving away a photo of some amazing dice. <laughs> a photo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, in the background there, you will see two wooden purple heart D20s without any numbers on them. And they're 45 millimeters, hence the size. And we're giving away one of these two, uh, the only two we've ever made, uh, without numbers as well as a really cool central piece that you can have sitting on your mantle or whatever the case is. And they're absolutely stunning. And if Ryan takes off the picture, you'll see them in my hands now. <gasps> Look at them Whoa. right there. I, like, like eyes. It's my... Please um, ignore the fact that I entered already. And <laughs> they smell amazing. Um, gar guaranteed smell, not promised. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, one of these amazing 45 millimeter purple heart D20s. If I win, I guarantee that I'm going to turn them into the end of a wand or a little staff or a walking stick, 100%. So... Just prepare because well, I if also you win, then I will do the same thing with the one I keep. There we go. We will so have we'll be, matching. We'll be, we'll be dice buddies. And in fact, if, okay. if anyone dice else buddies. does something with them, I'll match. Wait, Beautiful. sweet. Are we allowed? Can, are we allowed to enter our own giveaway? 
uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> we did it. So well, I, I tell you what, what we are allowed to do. We are allowed to use our offspring as inspiration. Mm-hmm. Oh, another baby! <laughs> oh, another baby! <laughs> I mean, I do. I love my daughter. Jesus. Valentino, you're so good. Hey, Valentino. Mine's still in the awkward newborn phase. Yours is all plump and delicious already. Why are you looking at all the computers? (laughs) Is Brie a witch? (laughs) Plump and delicious. I mean, I'm not not a witch. You also get your point of inspiration, mm-hmm. all of you who use. We got an inspiration point. We got an inspiration point. Pets and children point. for inspos. Mwah. All right, uh, but you better go back to sleep, hey? Um, <laughs> yeah. Love you, I, everyone. I still have to fight Nadia Thank for the friend. right to um to make our children marry each other. Apparently, they get a choice in it or something. I don't know. That's Apparently, <laughs> that's Alex funny. and I disagree. Awesome. Um, last I disagree. Then... I'm on your side. It's Nadia. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Alex yeah. and I disagree with Nadia. <laughs> She's old school. The new way to do it is to just have them be ready yeah. at birth. No choices required. You don't have to make the hard choices. Guys, we'll make them for you. Right. I think that's better that way. <laughs> we also have one more giveaway, which is this chroma shifting green and purple Ooh. set from the Infinidice Ooh. myth kickstarter that just ends tonight at midnight so also if you want one you can check that out too um, but if you look at them straight on they're purple if you look at them from the side they're green and they're very tron e and they're very red so i think that they're awesome if you want to see them in more detail go check out my little review video i did because they have a really awesome kickstarter um so we're gonna yeah. give away that set but with that i think that's all and i think that's enough to do a roll for recap Bree, let's see what you roll I got a 14. <laughs> 15. I got if it's a 13. Blend, what does that mean? Does that mean 40? Jade 17. <laughs> Jade Ivory. That's, that's, come on, Jackie, fail for me. Yes. Oh, Jade. wait, that's a 15. <laughs> Jade I'm Ivory, Drews. my level up dice. Wait, did you actually that's get that's lowest with 13? Did you? Did you just show us a D6, Ryan? Oh, yeah, I was showing the logo. I, I didn't know we were showing numbers. <laughs> oh, okay. I already moved that. <laughs> I was like, uh... Did I actually roll the, yeah, the lowest? Yeah, I rolled a 17. What did you roll, Brie? A 13. Brie. <laughs> What's the recap? I'll let you choose who does the recap. God, oh. Summer's back with her low rolls. Right. Um, okay, okay. I want to... Oh. Ryan. I let you choose! <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear, I want to hear continues. I wasn't hear paying attention last week. I'm just the DM. <laughs> you shouldn't have given this me that where... power. You know this. <laughs> this is where we can get our GFYs in so this dragon doesn't kill us. I mean, <laughs> what? This is, this is, this is when Ryan kills off Bree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not Summer. I'm going to make it happen. Bree. Bree. Summer's. <laughs> Bree, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So last week we started back up with Pepper uh, and Zania outside because they somebody to exclamation point guy for Ribonator. Uh <laughs> Last week uh, Pepper and Zania were outside because they had just noticed they were given horses by uh, Jez Corrigan, uh, five black stallion like war horses as they're in the middle of Queenstown still in the colonies of the Queen and trying to figure out a way to get out of there and head north to get to Kern. So this was a welcome gift. Ren woke up with Slim Shady and Slim Shady tried to duck out and Ren said, yeah, I get the deal. You can leave. Uh, Slim Shady headed on out of there. Um, How woke up and found themselves tucked in and wasn't exactly sure why they were tucked in, but decided, all right, well, let's get up and figure out what all this is about. Found Robert, get your tiny hands out of here, Drew. Found Robert and Celine downstairs uh, as Robert is slowly basically nursing a hangover. <laughs> why do you, you make it so hard? What is wrong with all of you? <laughs> I hate. I'm going to give Jackie a point of inspiration for being the only normal one here. Because <laughs> I can't. The only one who didn't download special software. Just exactly. the laziest of them all, really. And for having large have hands. tiny hands. <laughs> I mean, is this a really good recap, guys? Do you reckon GFY? No, GFY is for sure. GFY. That was a pretty bad recap. Ooh, y'all are making this dungeon even bigger. Uh, so. <laughs> 
I legitimately have my camera turned off because I am milking. So Fair. I I would like to just <laughs> put How that one out there. <laughs> Right. Uh, so with that, uh, you got Robert and Celine and the whole party kind of uh, back together and said, like, all right, let's let's go shopping. But then the whole party said, like, well, we're going to go shopping with you, basically uh, headed on over towards the western side of the city where all the magic was uh, on the way there. They met an illusionist who basically used Zania to scam a bunch of children and parents to have them buy their scrolls. Tried to sell scrolls at a really high price, so Pepper stole one and gave it to How, which was Phantom Steed, which is a very, very nice, uh, <laughs> very nice spell for them to use later. After that, they went further into the West, and they found those unwilling from before, Red Cherry Lady in Blue, who How said, mm, let me check their thoughts, because they seem to be acting a little weird, and they also mentioned that Spade was asking where we were... Spade being their good friend and old pal looking for them. Uh, they seemed to be telling the truth, didn't have any malicious intent behind them, and they went back to the inn since they did not want to be out and open in public because Spade could be watching them. They go back to the inn, and most of them just kind of go up to their rooms to talk and deal with this for a little bit. How and Ren leave and are greeted by Spade. As he basically says, look, I'm not here for you. I'm basically here for the rat and for the lioness. And I don't want to hurt the dragonborn either. Just leave town and I won't have to hurt you and bring you back to Keenak. And so Ren and Howe were contemplating that for a hot minute. Uh, Celine and Robert were chill. Celine showed Zania how to do some divination magic, which is pretty rad. Before the rest of the group said, all right. We should split up. That's the best thing to do is split the party. Uh, I think things will be better if we do that as Pepper is watching out for things. How and Ren decide to head off to the west again to find more magic stuff and more scrolls. When they do, they come across a bookstore with a little lever behind one book. Uh, How heard some whispers coming from the book telling him to do that and go down to the dungeon. So didn't know it was a dungeon at the time, but goes on down and in there. Pepper says, whoa, where'd my friends go? After they kind of disappear in this store. So runs in, threatens the shopkeep who holds persons you and throws you down a chute. But Pepper is a fey thief, so does the exact same thing to the shopkeep in reaction. As they both go slim sliding down into a little pit. Zania, Robert, and Celine are like, yeah, I think we should go check them out. How said there's a cool little dungeon down in the shop when they get there they can't find it so they take literally every book off the shelves as quickly as possible since there's no shopkeep in there there's no sign of their friends they open the book then a corridor opens they head on down how and ren find this semi-small little library after passing a bunch of onyx and silvery statues of dragons with amethyst eyes which leads to some purple flames in the room zania robert and celine head on down that way and then pepper is greeted by the uh, librarian who says, what the hell have you done? As a shadowy version of a dragon with purple flaming red eyes stares at you in the dark of this dank room. How did I do there? Is that worth a good recap or was that a bad sure, recap? Sure, that's worth it in spite for sure. It was yeah. a good recap, but Rybo, I didn't reveal what the spell was yet and you did. So that's Pepper why did. I think you get a GFY. Pepper said, no, Pepper said <laughs> it. didn't reveal it. What? No. Oh. No one said what the spell you told was us no. after the uh, event. Oh. Yeah, I, o I only. Yeah. See, that, that was all true. an optical illusion. <laughs> what you just heard with your. Oh ears. yeah, yeah. <laughs> an optical illusion. I won't GFY you for it, but I'll you know. take a GFY. Oh, you nice than, Someone less nice kind might. I'll take a GFY and an inspo because that's fair. Because <laughs> now I'm at five okay. GFYs. Mm -hmm. Even I didn't awesome. know. Yeah. Right. Does that mean we get one use each? <laughs> use them as you want them, because I'm glad. I'm just glad we're gonna need them. Summer. Just dragon rolls to attack. GFY, 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 GFY. I have five. How has two? Salt has two. Zania has three. So let's do this dungeon thing. What what happened Rin? to Hama's GFYs when she left? <laughs> They're all gone. New what? Year. The New Year. Don't oh. ask the question, Summer. Just sorry. <laughs> new Year, new meme. See, all you have to do, guys, is go have a baby. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Didn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. You love true, it. True. I do. I do. Right. And uh, I think Bobo is actually sitting at nine, so we'll see if we can get him to ten tonight and make something bad happen. Isn't, like, Strong Hearth really close to ten, too? Oh, yeah. I think they're both really, really close up there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Strong Hearth getting ten, though, feels 
more dangerous though for some reason. Yeah, Tim for Bourbon is just another day. Yeah. <laughs> right. If that's it, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Is everybody good? Let's do it. Do right. It. Everybody, grab a drink, pull up a chair, and come hang out with us at the Red Wagon Inn because that's the catchphrase where we left last time. Let's start right with you, Pepper. Let's just jump into it. What's up, you beautiful bastards? Let's just jump into it. Uh, it. GFY. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phil doesn't get GFYs. Right. Pepper, <laughs> you currently sit atop the librarian with the uh, dark skin, the large uh, poofed out hair, and now cracked glasses, uh, since you have <laughs> basically slid down them on a slide, uh, as you hear... A loud, which sounds like a deep bellowing wind as you look forward with your dark vision and see the outline and the silhouette of the shadowy figure as almost flame-like shadows seem to lick backwards from this shadowy apparition of a dragon with its bright purple eyes, kind of creating an outline of the room in here. There are chains to the walls with large iron collars um, that seem to hold onto every corner of the wall here, as well as a large ornate door with a carved version of the dragon's face sitting behind it. The illusory dragon here, I guess illusory is not the best word, the like shadowy dragon, uh, is itself very much like, um, in terms of visuals, like the Chinese dragons rather than the typical European dragon. It's a very slender, snake-like body uh, as it kind of curls up and around, though its head is ginormous as it breathes. I'm definitely t paying attention to that. Shadow. Instead, you know, while I'm sitting here, for sure. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you might uh, be yeah, paying yeah. attention oh, to yeah, that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's more easy. Yeah, yeah, I can see the Eastern influence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look at your art style, dragon. You're really pretty. <laughs> uh Sorry, keep going with the description. I'm sure everyone else appreciates it. That is what you currently out. see. Uh, somebody <laughs> said the highlighted messages are not showing up. I don't know what to do about that because they are in here now. So past that, that's not my fault anymore. <laughs> um, so that might Lanta! be something true or Lana you can look into, but it's not my fault anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, as basically where it ended last time was the caretaker or librarian who said, the hell have you done? <laughs> Looks over before the kind of deep bellow of wind comes out of this draconic figure staring you directly in the eyes. So first things first, I'm just going to scream internally um, and sort of just yell out, um, well, guys, I gone down, fuck this up as loud as I can inside my head. Just pretty much just, this is it. I can't believe I am staring face to face as a dragon. Salt was needed doing it once. Here I am doing it again. Have I learned nothing from my brother? Um, and then I guess, uh, I'll look up and go, hi. You wave your hand up at the dragon. It gets very close to your face and you see the kind of falling shadows from its nostrils expel forward like incense on the ground before going back upwards into it as if sniffing around that you don't hear or see any indication of it. You just see what would be, uh, if the wind had a physical form, go out and then back in kind of continuously. The caretaker person tries to push you off and get away from you uh, and out from under you. Uh, she's going to try and push you off. If you let her, then she just does. Uh, but if you try and keep her restrained, then I need an opposed strength check. What I'll do is, as she's trying to stand up, I'm going to roll off her back backwards. Mm -hmm. giving me some space between the dragon, her, and me. Okay. Sounds good. Um, two seconds. All right. As you roll gently backwards, you kind of pop off. This person stands up and throws her glasses immediately to the ground and holds her hands up towards the dragon and says, I... I'm not supposed to be here. Let me out through that door. I do nothing but serve you. It is he who has come in here and has served you falsely. I meant to bring them as an offering, not as anything that you should see me as prey as well. Oh, great shadow, just let me out through the door and I shall bring you even more delicacies. Please. 
Is that maybe she begins trying to move and circle around this great dragon figure towards the door. Uh, I'm going to respond to that. Um, and I'm going to go Oh, mighty shadow dragon, as you can see, I am a follower of the shadow with what I wear and what I do. And I spin and do a hide in shadows, pretty much. I just go stealthy. I know it's not going to be really viable, but I'm trying to show that I'm a, I'm a shadowy individual. Okay, go ahead and roll me a persuasion. <laughs> Bree, I was waiting for it. So you know that inspo I got from Valentino? Can I have Valentino <laughs> down again? I'm going to use it. <laughs> what was your original roll? It was a six, and it turns into a 19 plus persuasion, which is 21. Nice. As daddy. you sense the fear in the librarian's voice, you just hear almost pure cowardice spewing out. You mask yours quite heavily as your black-framed armor and leathers swipe almost like shadows as you twirl and move up in the air as you slink into the corner of the room, not backing towards the door, but just further away. The shadowy dragon looks down and begins circling like a snake coiling around the two of you, kind of pulling both of you inside a almost ring of this dragon's scales. When it does so, roll me a perception in the dark down here. I don't do perception. That's a nine. A nine. You are a bit frightened of this creature and a bit too worried about it eating you than you would be to get a closer look as its body as it twirls around. You keep your eyes very focused on the head of this shadowy beast. It coils its head up and back and looks down towards you as you begin to see light in the room. It's almost as if it's breathing in the shadows around you. You actually recognize there are torches in here that are lit. Everything begins to take an almost purple outline or silhouette, much like its eyes. The torches themselves are purple flames inside this room seems to be breathing in the shadows before it pulls back towards the caretaker and rears its head forward and it sounds like a gentle wind before even in your dark vision she is obscured from you as the shadows seem to pelt her like a jet of flame I'm gonna react and breathe in and do the exact same thing to the caretaker. Okay. You, Let me roll you to did see what get happens. that back last time, correct? I did. Yeah, Come I on, like it. Bring, give me a 20. 10. Okay, it's fine. It's okay. gone now. Still use it, though. Uh, as oh, you yeah. see the shadows pelt against the caretaker and slam into the wall, beginning to fill the room back <laughs> up with darkness. But instead, you take the shadows into your diaphragm as your belly expands and swells before like a bellow another gentle wind flies towards the caretaker what little chance she may have had to survive this is no more as you bellow this out I actually do need you to choose something for me as the shadows enter your body sure if you were to choose something uh, like let's see here Acid, cold, fire, lightning, necrotic, or poison. What type of magic would you want to come out of your belly and physically exist from these shadows? Let's go cold. Cold. As you bellow out, removing all heat from around this caretaker, you can see she once was singed by the great shadowy fire of this dragon, no longer as ice crystals begin to form on the third degree burns that cover her body. Regardless of saves, the caretaker now stands like a frozen statue in the middle of the room. As shadows envelop once again. Doesn't change your vision so much, but you can tell now it is dark in here as everything only takes a silhouetted gray form for you. 
The dragon looks towards you and begins to almost <laughs> sniff once again. Is that, is that coming across? I mean, oh, I, yeah, I hear it. <laughs> Amazing. What was that? <laughs> uh, right. uh, didn't look as good as it could have. <laughs> as uh, it turns towards you, it seems to be breathing just like it did before. The shadow is kind of going in and out of its nostril. Not breathing in as if to bellow out once more, but just breathing, looking at you anticipatory. Um, I haven't got much experience with dragons. Um... Just the one. It is an honor to be in your presence. You hear... And I bow. As you bow. Uh, you bow forward, your eyes looking down. You hear a name. Like a breeze. Sorfin. Enter your mind. Um, uh, There's so many voices in my head right now. An honor, Sorfin. As it slurks forward, getting low to the ground, its head about three feet tall, mimicking your height as a rat folk, it gets inches from your face before another puff of shadows appears nearby. This one is dark, but gray in origin. As you feel a jet of cold nearby summer can you describe what you currently look like and are covered in i sure can um summer looks a little bit more worse for wear than she did the last time you saw her um she is covered in a dusting of snow uh the bottom of her boots that she's now wearing are kind of wet with uh melted uh, water, and she is um, looking quite rugged up. <laughs> Summer is also looking quite skinny compared to what she yeah. once did, as if a bit malnourished. The dragon seems to recoil back as if startled, seeing you do new magic before it. I, um, sis, I, what are you doing? Uh, I'm enjoying it. Now's not the time. We gotta go, man. We gotta go. Um, Why did? Say hi to Sorfin first. Hi. Summer, Sorfin. you turn and look and see a very tall, very long, possibly 30 or 40 feet, shadowy apparition of a dragon inside this room with two large ornate doors on the other side. Um... It looks like you have a little bit of a situation here. I, hi, hi, Sorfin, how you doing? I you... sort of um, tie my tail around Summer's tail while this is happening. You begin to try and converse uh, in a casual manner with Sorfin. Uh, yeah. It stares you up and down before coiling in a similar manner to the way it did before, Pepper, you and the caretaker around you and summer now um is this is are we are we friends with soften pepper is this a is this i like your legged option <gasps> okay um i i yeah we should we should uh, skedaddle uh uh hey 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 casty cast cast on dude we gotta get we gotta get out of here mate you start kind of like Flicking your hand, yelling out for Castagon. Sorfin begins to coil more tightly around you. The ring shrinks from maybe 20 feet in diameter to 10. It seems to be like a snake shrinking in towards you. I, uh, it's been a pleasure, Sorfin. Thank you for letting me bask in your glory. Uh, he's a... Uh, uh, he's... Sometimes he comes a little faster than you, than, oof, oof, Summer's back. Um, <laughs> some, uh, sometimes it takes him a little while. I can't come back for this guy. GFY, you're back, Summer, you get a GFY, welcome back. <laughs> um, 
um, takes them a little while to answer the call occasionally. Uh, is there is there there's somewhere we can go while we wait for this? As... We, is this a we can leave kind of situation? Or... Do you still have your hat? Yeah. It looks a little tattered, but um, I flip down the hat, beat some of the snow off, and... Get in. Both of us? What? <laughs> and I, without even waiting for, for her to get in, I, start, I just sort of jump and bring out the tail and grab the hat and hoping that Summer is on her way in, start trying to float up. Do you I, jump into I, the hat or? I will kind of try my best to like, oh God, and scurry into the hat. As you're um, doing this, this is all at the same time kind of quickly being surrounded and coiled by this snake-like dragon. Um, so, Summer, <laughs> if you're going to try and jump into this hat, and since Pepper, you're kind of going and allowing her to jump into said hat, I'd say, Summer, you're last as Pepper, you begin floating in the air very quickly. Summer, I need a dexterity save to see if you can get in prior to being coiled by this snake dragon. I will use the Shadow Daddy dice. <laughs> Shadow Daddy? You must know Shadow Daddy. Shadow Daddy? Um, that's oh, 18. So <laughs> what am I doing? Dex, 18. Yeah. Is it a save? Yes. Uh, 23. As uh, you quickly realize that this creature is closing in on you at an exponential rate, not only its size, it may crush you wholly rather than just grab you. So you quick think that, okay, yeah, I should just jump into this hat. And you quickly pop in. It's up to you whether you like keep a head out, whatever, but you do jump into the hat just enough to quickly escape the grasp of this shadowy snake dragon. Pepper, as it does so, you float into the air Equal height to its head as it stands up with its many legs, peering back almost like a cobra, its eyes looking radiatively bright. What are you doing? I I breathe in just like before, even though I can't do anything realistic with it. You trying to scare it off? Maybe intimidation, yeah. Okay, I'll let you do a deception or a performance. Oh, wow. Those are a lot better than Intimidation, so I'll go with either one. They're both plus five. Okay. That's another 19! 24! Solid. As you use a bit of your magic innate to you, you expand your belly outwards, much like you did before, though this time it is illusory in its style. Uh, Summer, with your eyes just barely peeping out of the top of the hat, you see Pepper float up like a puffer fish, ready to breathe towards this draconic figure. The cobra-like dragon stands its ground, waiting for you to make a move. Is that Castagon? I, I, I guess he's otherwise occupied. Um, I mean, he did ask me to come here. You'd think that he'd help me get out, but no, apparently not. Uh, uh, where, where is everyone? Can you have I... something that direction? I, <laughs> uh-huh. okay. um, I We're going to pause there with you then. While uh, y'all are up in the air as the cobra gets ready to strike. How and Ren, we last laughed where you were hearing Robert yell down towards Pepper! down coming from the stairway that you just came from. You both are in this small little library with five chairs down here and four torches of purple flame. What are you doing? These are some nice hey. books. Right? Very fancy. But um, this one I just read is talking. See, I heard whispers when we were upstairs, right? Um, mm. But these books are talking about like a shadow dragon, and like it's not just like a ooh pretty dragon. This is hmm. what's a nice way to put this. This is this is some cult shit, Ren. Um, but it's so beautiful. I mean, look at this statue, and Ren points to the amethyst eyed statue. Oh yeah, no, it's all gorgeous. Whoever did this put a lot of money and work into it. But there's a very handy. Um, yeah. Uh, 
sorry, I just I keep hearing the whispers. Of, <laughs> keep talking about uh, that summer person again. Anyway, <laughs> Robert, we're down here. Robert, <laughs> Zania, as you, Celine, and Robert are at the top of this ramp-like staircase that goes in a spiral downwards, you see a small statue of tarnished silver with amethyst eyes, which intrigues you before you hear in the distance down from this spiral staircase, Ren and Howe yelling back in reply to Robert. Robert says, I think I, I, think I heard them down there. Okay, we're on the right, right path here. Yeah, uh, he- hello? Zinnia yells, hey. oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. hello. Do we just keep on following the dragon? I'm just going to assume we follow the dragons. Um, yeah, basically, um, just walk for a little bit. Um, we're down here at the bottom. We're exploring down here. <laughs> <laughs> Love um, <it. laughs> I'm going to, like, wander around the room. Um, Zania, and... are you heading downwards towards them? Mm-hmm. Okay, because uh, remember, um, it was a couple hundred feet down, so this is very much a yelling match that echoes throughout this uh, ramp downwards. Um, so, Zania, you begin taking Robert and Celine further down this spiral staircase. Out, Ren, while they're on their way, are you going to meet them or staying down here in this spot? I'm going to go I'm investigate the door. Okay. How's just kind of like wandering around the room at this point, like curiously, like why the whispers would have brought him here. And also because um, with highlighted messages, how's hearing things um, about summer and he's just like weird, but yeah. Okay. Ren, what are you doing? I'm just looking at all the pretty purple stuff. It's very nice. Still intrigued by the, the purple flames, which is what I do. And I'm like, <laughs> how go ahead and roll me an investigation. I think I only have a plus one, but it's still okay. I, I saw my intimidation, thought it was investigation. I was like, plus seven? When was I that smart? Um, No, but it's plus one. Uh, uh 14. <laughs> 14. As described before, there is a giant version of that dragon's face on the front of the door with two nose rings as like essentially the knockers where you would pull open on the door here. Other than that, it just it just appears to be an ornate door. Hmm. That's an ornate I'm gonna, door. I'm gonna I'm gonna like pull on it, see if anything happens, but I'm gonna like do the whole like get ready to jump out of the way in case like there's darts or anything. Okay. Do, do you let Ren know this? <laughs> as Ren is behind you. <laughs> as how pulls on one of the yeah. do you pull on the right the or check. the left uh <laughs> little nostril ring for reasons uh left <laughs> you pull but it, it doesn't really seem to budge you could try and force it open but the door must be locked or something i'm gonna push this left side you as in push the ring or just push the door Push the door, because I was going to say, if it feels like it's locked from, like, the left, like, can I can I push it, or is the, it's still, like, it's, like, locked firm? You put your shoulder up against it, and it just feels like you're pushing straight up against a stone wall. You don't feel any give to it at all. I'll try the right side, then. You pull on the right nostril. This time, as you do so, the same thing happens. The door doesn't seem to budge at all. I'm going to knock three times. Roll me a perception, Ren and How. Actually, in Zania, we'll say it about this time. You, Robert, and Celine have come down to the bottom of this little pathway here and see a brightly lit purple room with four flames, five chairs, and books on both the east and western portion of the room. You see Ren and How standing here beneath this purple light in an ornate door with a dragon's face carved into it. What'd you get, How? Hey, that's. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, it is a stupid joke. <laughs> Do it. I'll give you a JFY. I love it. That's an ornate door. <laughs> <laughs> that is an ornate door. What'd you get, How, Ren, and Zania for your perceptions? 20. 12. Unnatural 20. Ooh. Ren and Zania, you hear what sounds like hitting into a hollow 
chest. It sounds more wooden than it does stone or metal that the appearance would give you think that it would be. Hmm. There's something, or I guess I should say there's nothing behind that door. How? So, is this another pull a book from the bookshelf thing? It could be. Do you want to try your luck again and see if we get lucky pulling the book? Uh, sure. I'm going to pull a random book. <laughs> oh, we're doing this again. <laughs> Robert's going to see you uh, and start pulling books off as well, just throwing them directly to the ground. Uh, yeah. Robert, we, wait. We, 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 we totally kind of couldn't tell or remember which door uh, book we had to pull, so we kind of just pulled all of them upstairs. Uh, oh, I'm sure the shopkeep didn't like that. She wait, hold up, hold up. I was just about to say, you're here. Pepper's not with you. No. Where is Pepper? Yeah, so there were Pepper's daggers everywhere, but no one was around. I like a couple daggers, not like all the daggers, but a couple. Uh, yeah, I thought that um, Pepper wait. would have been with you. That's, that's what you said. I may have exaggerated with how together we were. Uh, okay. I don't know what that means. Um, I mean that I don't know where Pepper is, and I had assumed Pepper was upstairs behind the, the bookshelf, and now it sounds like Pepper is not there, and if you cross paths with where Pepper is, that's... Ooh, that's a... D Okay. I mean, we tried to look around the store, the shop, and there was nothing. It was just daggers, and that's it. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, but the windows were still fogged. I, I start pointing in random directions and start using message of. <laughs> Being that it's all in your head, you're just. <laughs> <laughs> kind of all over the room uh, as uh, Robert continues to pull books off the shelves uh, Celine kind of I what are you what are you doing to Ren <laughs> uh, uh, I can I can message people through like solid objects so I don't know a bird a bird a oh, bird wait I I can do that, but I don't have to guess. Um, I'm gonna send a message to Pepper and be oh, like, "Where are you?" Hold on a sec. <laughs> oh oh no! Big fuck off, dragon. Um, hey guys. So uh, the whispers suddenly make sense now. As we're gonna mm. pause there and go to Pepper and Summer. Pepper, as you fly upwards into the air and bellow inward, attempting to intimidate this dragon, you hear in your head, hey, Summer, uh, we're a big fuck off dragon. <laughs> That's where we're gonna continue <laughs> at. Uh, what are you doing as this dragon stares you down? Trying to keep the dragon from killing us. <laughs> like, I'm just a rat. <laughs> Um, I will continue to float, poised, but not doing anything. I guess getting ready to react to if something happens. The dragon looks upwards Hoping something. at you and begins to kind of swirl underneath you, looking at you curiously. As it gets up from behind you, it gets over above your head looks down towards you. Summer, it pauses for a moment as it looks inwards towards the hat and it seems to match gazes towards you. It's almost like when you stare deep into a campfire, this purple flame seems to look back into your eyes as your head looks outwards from the hat and it stops briefly. It moves closer towards the hat, Pepper. It's currently behind you now. You are closer... Uh, you are between it and the door now. It is circled. I'll try around. to keep eye contact whenever possible. So I'm going to try to keep spinning around and everything. So I don't want to lose eye contact with this thing, if possible. I figure it's kind of like a battle of wits at the moment. Or they're trying to figure out what the heck I am, and I'm trying to figure out what the heck I am as well. Gaia, as you basically continue to do a waltz 
backwards and forwards with each other, never losing eye contact with this thing, eyes, that it does have. It puts its small, tiny arms up against the wall and begins to almost crawl upwards, but never leaving its head between a foot away from where yours is, Summer. And I kind of on you, Pepper, and I kind of on you, Summer. It doesn't seem to fly so much as it does crawl upwards towards the top of this room. This room is maybe 30 feet in height, almost like a cylinder that stands straight up. It's about 20 feet wide, 30 feet high. Uh, you're almost in a tin can of sorts with the doors that are down towards the bottom. The doors stand maybe eight or nine feet tall as it looks at you. It then begins to almost whisper towards you as you hear, What? I Summer, you kind of cut out as you said it. I don't know. Say again. If if you're saying something, say again. Where rat? <laughs> do, do you want out? Yes, rats. Let me free. Ooh. So look to Summer quickly and so like nod my head. Um, okay. Do you breathe? You ask, does it breathe? Pepper, you begin to see the shadows pull upwards towards its nostrils yet again as it takes an intake of air. Summer, you suddenly see the room for what it actually is, covered in a bright purple light stone walls ornate door of silver there's no more shadows here that's neat it must be taking the shadows away for you but pepper you know what is happening here what are y'all doing wait uh, i will get the door and i turn to the door drop to the ground and we start heading to the door to try to open it well i was just suggesting it gets in the hat i don't know why it's getting all huffy as Pepper, you fall to the ground. Summer leans out like, I, why doesn't it just get into the hat? <laughs> Pepper, you go over to this very large doorway here. When you do so, it has a head mimicking that same dragon from before with two silver rings as nostrils, or are on its nostrils here, almost like uh, door handles and knockers to be able to open it, just like what how Ren and Zania see. All right, I will attempt to uh, open it, unlock it, see if there's a locking mechanism. You, I've played with a lot of ornate things before. You try and pull against it, but it doesn't seem to give way. Is it like, can I find like a mechanism? Can I see sort of, oh, that might link to that, or there might be something inside here that if I press this button, and this, or this depression and this depression, it might open? Roll an investigation. I will. Nice. 17 plus investigation. 19. 19. Is it a dead body? I get the roll advantage. <laughs> no, it isn't. As you look <laughs> over this dragon's face, it is a perfect carving of the dragon that you see behind you, Sorfin, as it describes itself. The eyes are large amethysts, almost comedically large, the size of small melons, but cut into rectangular shapes for its eyes. They would make a, a fine price to sell, but you don't see anything that gives you any clues on how to leave. Summer, the best way to stop a shadow dragon from getting out is with light, right? I mean, yeah. Because there can't be any light in here? Uh, I sort of yell out to um to Sorfin, look, it's maybe uncomfortable. Close your eyes or turn around, and I take out a torch. Okay. You pull out an unlit torch as it looks at it quizzically for seeming to have some sort of recognition in its eyes. What are you doing with this torch? Lighting it. You light it up. Bit of magic using a flint and tinder. I don't have that kind of magic. 
flint tinder it is as you i cast light on it <laughs> oh so instead of fire what happens is you have this stick with cloth and oil wrapped around it that is now glowing a brilliant pearlescent white light filling the entirety of the room beautiful white magic that seems to fade towards the top of the room now seeing this shadowy apparition in its full form no longer covered in this purple um, fire light from the torches that are around here in the room it itself seems to slick off shadow like one of the uh dementor or not dementor uh, dementor could work but the death eaters from harry potter is the best description i can give it man i need an outfit like that um I, i'll take the light up towards these amethyst representations in the door okay you hold the light upwards are you trying to get a better investigation of it no, or like, for some reason my rat instincts are telling me that if I had to have a door that could could not be opened by a shadow dragon, I'd have to use some sort of trigger that the shadow dragon does the opposite of, which would be light. So I'm hoping beyond all hope that my stupidity in my thought process is light will open this door because the shadow dragon could never get out then. I'm going to have you pause there as we go back to how Zania and Ren, since Ren seems to be a stressy little boy. <laughs> <laughs> This Ren is the session. Rin leaves the party. <laughs> I'm just saying it now. If a dragon gets out, Rin is done. <laughs> Summer's back, um. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I have marks on my face from you. You're not even salt. <laughs> How you hear? There's a big old dragon, basically, as that's the last thing you hear from Pepper. Hmm. How's going to pause so and grab, like, on both sides of the door, he's going to hold both things. Mm -hmm. And from under Hal's mask, black smoke is going to pour out. And I'm going to cast darkness on myself and see, and pull on the doors again. Zania, Ren, Celine, Robert, you look over as Hal steps away from the bookshelf seemingly immediately, uh, rushes over to the door as smoke pours out from inside his tunic, and he pulls with heavy might on the nostril rings. Uh, it still doesn't seem to budge to your touch, Hal. Hmm. Dang, thought that would do a thing. Well, how, how you said there, there was a dragon? Yeah, apparently there's a dragon, and I'm assuming that this will lead us further. So I wanted to. Um, this wanted is a big something. door. Yeah. So, what is your thought process if, you know, this big door and there's a dragon behind this big door, and this dragon gets through this big door? Well, I want to help Pepper, and then we close the big door. Okay. Yeah, just throw it out there. If there's a dragon, we have to help Pepper regardless, Ren. This is... I'm just saying. Zinnia. You guys have a bad tendency with dragons. I'm just throwing it out there. One time. I mean, do you know that? Do you know how bad we are with dragons? <laughs> yeah, what? I've heard the story six times. <laughs> yeah. We still have a better story. As... Robert says, Zania. He runs over to where Hal is currently pouring smoke out. Uh, and I'm going to assume, you're, are you keeping darkness up, or? If there's no response from the door in darkness, I'm going to drop it. Okay. Um, when you drop it, then, Robert, uh, hearing that there's a dragon, possibly Pepper, goes over and beckons Zania for him to pull on one of the uh, nose rings of the dragon here to try and open the door with your strength trying to pull on the other one. Before she does that, Zinni, I would just like to mention, um, Ren, if you were with a dragon, we would do the same for you. So, yes, it, yeah. it's, Let me it, die I, if that was to happen, but fine, I'll help. No, never. If we're but not if this let, dragon oh, gets out, it's all not my fault. Four other people, as you say, just let me die. So how Celine, Robert, and Zania all snap back at you? No! <laughs> no. If we're not going to let Ren... A random yeah, die on yeah. the side of the road. Oh, my right light just. Oh, Nimbus must be angry. Nimbus does not like what I'm saying right now. Oh man, um, I'm not gonna Listen. let a random die on the side of the road. I'm not letting you die either. And I'm gonna go and I help pull the. Uh, uh, rings. Roll me a strength check. Uh, you can do athletics also, for that. While they're trying to pull at the door, um, 
can I, I'm going to grab the book I first read when I was doing my investigation, mm -hmm. like flipping through rapidly. Cause you said like, like I got some, I don't remember what I rolled last time, but like, is there anything referencing like doors, passages, cult like rituals, this dragon or anything that can, um, like you give us any info only briefly just to kind of get an understanding of what's going on. So I'll let you roll another investigation while this is going on to see if you can get more yeah. information. Zania, okay. what is your check? 21. 21. Beautiful. Uh, you and Robert begin to pull. Uh, you can feel your muscles strain against this almost immovable wall before both of you put both feet up against the wall and pull heavily on these nostril rings, but nothing is giving way here. You almost are afraid that you're going to crack the metal pulling on it so hard, but you're not feeling any give to this thing. Uh, two, fuck, nothing's working. Two things throwing it out there. This is magical, right? So, do you think it's like my clothes and Rin says fashion and the clothes change to a slightly, oh. you know, dimmer look? Or, could be an illusion. Also, if you let me in, I can get them out, but you have to shut the door behind me. Um, what? you want to talk about trust? What are you doing? What you know how to get in? Then just get us in. No, I don't know how to get in. I know how to get out. Fine. I trust you, Ren. Um. Also, I got a nineteen for the investigation in the book. Okay. As uh, Ren is having this conversation, you're looking through. Uh, you seem to get that they're worshiping this dragon with some sort of reverence, but the wording in the text seems to indicate that. They worship it like one might uh, Maximus, a gladiator who does good work for them. Not someone that they necessarily serve, but that serves them. But you don't hear anything about illusions or how to get in, how to get out. That's escaping you. Does it drop the dragon's name? Does how know it at this point? It seems to just reference the living shadow. Hmm. Interesting. So far, all I'm getting from these books is that uh, whatever this dragon is that Pepper is dealing with, it um, it serves this cult. They are they they love it and and worship it and revel in its glory, but it is. It's a slave to them. So, um, that's news, but there's nothing in here that tells us how to get to them. I'm not really and, sure what to do. Uh, <laughs> bow. Okay. Zinnia so will go in front of the door and get on her knees and bow. Okay. <laughs> Staring at the door. Go ahead and roll me a religion check, Zinnia. Okay. How goes? Did did you drop something or? <laughs> I rolled a two and negative one. It's a one. You have negative one <laughs> as a cleric. I love it. <laughs> you bow before the door, and much like in your hometown, all the other doors you bow to, nothing else really happens. This door sits there, <sighs> seeming to so stare at you with its amethyst eyes. How it just sounded like this dragon likes its followers. I was just thinking if I just, you know, showed it some respect, it might have opened the door somehow, but uh, clearly that didn't work. Wait, well, this is about to be dumb. They don't respect the dragon, Red. though. The dragon does things for them. The dragon's a prisoner to them. Oh, I'm going to run up to the door and yell. Hold on. I got to pause on you there for a second, Hal, because okay. Ren's saying he's about to do something. Oh. So. Oh, God. Okay, do it. This is about to be dumb. Rin lifts up their foot, stamps it down, cast Dimension Door, and onto the other side of the door. How far? <laughs> Literally on the other side of the door. Oh, so just like a foot or two? Mm, sure. Oh, there's up to 500 feet you could do on the other side of the door, so you tell me. Yeah, I don't know how far this room goes, and I'd rather not teleport into a wall. <laughs> I heard it was SDG hollow on no the other flip, side. Baby. 
I, I did hear it was hollow on the other side, so I'm just going to make an assumption on how far I should go on the other side of this door. So I'll just a door. few feet? Sure. All right, you got to tell me. Like I me. said, this is about is to be dumb. foot or 500 yes. feet? Got like five, um, just to be safe. Three feet. Three feet. <gasps> sounds good. It could be a big door. Ren, you don't have dark vision, do you? Nope. Okay. I have As no way to see in the dark. You... <laughs> Oof, onto the other side of the door, you find yourself in a brilliant darkness. We'll pause there. Pepper, you and Summer stand there with your magically glowing, not lit on fire torch, <laughs> <laughs> holding it aloft. Summer, are you still in the hat? Uh, yeah. I okay, so Summer just, just puts out her out arm out of the hat to light the torch and then puts her arm back in, head sticking out. Uh, as you hold the torch up to the door. I think seems to react to the light from the porch. Uh, uh, Pepper, how the hell did you get in here? Well, like there was a chute. Swore to we can't help out. the dragon if we go through the chute. Exactly. Exactly, Solfin. We're on it. We're on it, buddy. I got your back. I'm also a shadowy dude. Has he been changing? Has he been changing his size? Sorfin? Yeah. No, still seems to be a very, very large dragon. Okay, so it's not like a, a you can slip into a jar type situation. I mean, Doesn't we appear can try to be. putting him in a hat if you want, but... And then we can climb up the chute, or I can fly up the chute. That's not a problem. Hey, hey, Penguin. How do you feel about, about sharing the hat space, my dude? You look with... down into the hat. Um, nobody else can see, save Summer, uh, but... You look down as you're standing atop Penguin's shoulders to be able to keep your head out of the hat. He kind of is like, if you could just hurry up and deal with whatever dragon you're dealing with, I'm so, uh, I just want to see Peppa. Oh, <laughs> I hop down off his shoulders and put him up <laughs> on my shoulders. Summer disappears into the hat, but you see the head of a penguin look out and says, Pepper. Oh, it's so good. Oh, right. right. Before Ow. it dumps the, the head into the hat, thinking the dragon was more a further away thing, not a close by thing, and ducks right back down inside so is, the hat. So, 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 penguin, is that a no to to the dragon coming in here? Do uh, I, I? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a fan of uh, anything mm. that looks like it could swallow me whole twenty times over. Uh, That's you fair. all dealt That's with fair. Ithaca, not me. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, yeah, Pepper, it's it's seeming like a no go for the hat. Hmm. All right, it's gonna be another way out of here. <laughs> I'll climb. I'll climb out of the hat now <laughs> and put it back on my head, just to establish that I am now in the room. Can we see <laughs> any hinges? Uh, roll an investigation for me. Again, you have the light, so that's helpful. Great. Um, since I'm so good with like my hands and and locks and stuff normally because that's what I'm good at maybe I can take a different number than the six I rolled plus the two from investigation <laughs> well it definitely lowers the DC I'll tell you that but the solid eight there uh, Pepper good job on the eight, solid eight. Uh, your hair stands pretty high up on your back right now as the dragon overlooks you it's a bit embarrassing you know uh, you've done this many times before but right now you're just focused on hopefully this dragon doesn't decide to exhale because currently it still has inhaled all of the shadow and you've seen what it's done before looking back over you see the caretaker covered in third degree burns and icicles gotta be a way to get him out um so we've established pepper that you came through a shoot and that's how you got in here um i came in you know by other means which apparently is not an option for getting back out Something thanks else upwards <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, um, excuse me, Mr. Shadowy Dragon chap, how did you get in here? Sorfen. Sorfen, 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 my bad dude, I'm sorry. How did, how did you get in here? It kind of slithers around and looks at you. I have always uh, been. I want to know what the outside is like. I hear you, buddy, it's beautiful out there. Were you born in here? Yes. Made in the shadows. Dark. That's horrible. Do you like? Do you like the light that this 
See the brightness? Do you like it? I cannot exist without some light, but I do not mm. love the light. Right. Hmm. Do you mind just sharing some of your philosophical views on life with me? Like, Come on, now is not the time. Well, I'm just interested. Like, you know, it's really, I think it's really mean that people trapped you in this room. Like, not great. But how might you react to people that don't trap you in rooms? And, like, the general public? If well, like, you let me leave, if you help me out, of this room, I will not take your shadows, away, nor shadow. Sounds that's, pretty awesome, actually. That's really, really kind of you. Yeah, um, I, I am a what, fan of my shadow. What about what about say like other people's shadows? Like if you were just to get out into the outside world, which is of course what we're going to aim to help you do right now. But um, what kind of effect might you have on other people's shadows, you know? Roll a persuasion for me, Summer. <laughs> Bat hitting my forehead. <laughs> um, uh, that's alright. That's a 21. 21. It seems to tolerate your questions still. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as you say, what, what, about, what, what about the other shadows in the world? What, 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 do, you, what do you want with those shadows? It says, I cannot exist without shadows. I must consume to remain. Hey, sunshine, how about you come and help me over here? Okay, um, it was it was super great talking to you. Um, I we'll get yeah. you out, great soften. We got you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, got your back mm -hmm. and your front mm -hmm. and your shadow, but it's your shadow, not mine. It seems. To almost exhale shadows through the pores of its body, filling the room once again with darkness. You can no longer see the light from the torches on the wall. The light that you hold in your hand, even, seems to only give off the dimmest of light in the air. Um, so we're gonna let the dragon out through this door? I mean, we've done worse. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, can I having having a favor having a friendship or a favor or at least don't kill me from a dragon is never a bad thing. Oh, you don't have to tell me twice. I have two. Uh, I have two little dragon babies. You know. How are they going anyway? Look, I have been somewhat of an absent parent lately. Uh, Aren't we all really? Uh, I'll check in. I'm pretty sure they're still in their eggs, right? They'll be fine. Um, so, what? How about you use some of your mystical newfound chat goodness to blast this door a few times um oh yeah 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 okay uh uh just like just like this and i cast um eldritch blast ah well, uh, what part of the door uh what is the door what's the door looking like again there's like the, the, the eyes silver head of a dragon with amethyst eyes with eyes um just just in the eyes i reckon just one eldritch blast towards an eyeball. As you pull back magic, you hear a loud yell come out of your hand as you shoot one of your blasts from chat into the amethyst eye. I need both of you to make me a strength saving throw. Ah, nuts. Strength? <laughs> We're rats. So he's not good on that either. That 20. That 20. Uh, 14. 14. Say, uh, Pepper, luckily, uh, you say, why don't you uh, blast the door here? You're holding on to the ring and the nostril to try and pull it open just in case, but that actually gives you something to hold on to. Uh, as Summer, you shoot a blast of force-like energy, and when you do so, a small shockwave erupts out from the gem of this eye, sending you all flying backwards away from the door as if expelled from the gem on this eye. Pepper, you're able to hold yourself onto the ring, but Summer, you are flown back into the stone behind, as is Sorfin. Uh, you take nine points of bludgeoning damage as you hit the stone wall behind. Well, that did something. Holy shit. 
Sorfin. Yeah, not, a, not a great idea there, Pep. <sighs> yep. Seems to get a little angry now as it says, You said you would get me out of here. And what are we doing, buddy? At that Chill. pause, Ren, you find yourself in pure darkness. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm going to light a torch. Okay. As you... I'm going to use some precipitation and pull out your torch, light it on fire. What color is your fire? Still themed purple? Yeah. Fuck you. Light a purple flame. You find yourself in a room with four doors. One directly behind you. One immediately in front of you. One to the left of you. One to the right of you. The one to your right stands maybe 50 feet tall. The one in front of you is the same height as the one that you came in from. Maybe about a seven foot tall door. Normal door. The one to your left, you barely recognize to be a door at all. It sits maybe a foot tall off of the ground. Can I take the torch and look at the ground to make sure I'm not stepping on like glass or anything? Yeah. Uh, looking... As I walk towards the really tall door where I assume a dragon might be. Looking downwards, you actually do see glass beneath you. There seems to be shards of glass beneath a almost glass-roofed pit uh, where there seems to be a liquid underneath. There's almost a channel uh, going from one brazier in this room to another. There are four seemingly in the corners of all of the rooms. There's a glass cylinder that connects between all of them and runs along the grounds as channels connecting all four of these glass... Channels is the best word I can use. Rin takes a deep breath in and woosahs, and when Rin woosahs, they use their spell, um, their, um, what are they called? Uh, fonts of magic to restore a level four spot, just in case I need Dimension Door again. <laughs> um, and I'm going to take out of my equipment. Do, do, do. Uh, I've got, uh, I, I've got another torch. Can I like roll it across the ground? If you'd like to, there's currently a glass roof over these channels, uh, as if like a little walkway. So there's this, um, stone ground where there's almost a little mm. slot, uh, where there's a liquid that goes underneath and a glass roofing on top to where you could walk over it. So if you oh, okay. roll something, it's gonna roll. It wasn't top of like glass. it wasn't like thin glass over top of it. Correct, correct. That That's I like know a of. Glass okay. walkway. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'm gonna make my way carefully over to this tall door. Okay. You stand eclipsed by the might of this fifty foot tall door. The rings on this dragon's nostrils have to be ten feet in diameter. It is meant for gods. The gems alone could make you rich beyond measure. Generations of your children would never have to work again if you would sell just one. Hmm. Again, start pointing. Pepper! 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 <laughs> Ren holding the torch points all around. Zinnia, how? What are you doing with Robert and Celine? Ren disappears not telling you what they're doing just says <sighs> before <laughs> disappearing <sighs> oh. Zinnia tries to step wait <laughs> tries to step like Ren did because Ren did like a, a dramatic step right and then did dimension door mm -hmm. she tries to copy it do you have dimension door <laughs> or are you saying you're casting that or just, just trying steps. to step she just steps because she tried to battle, right? So she's okay. Yes, step step. okay. You step towards the door as your nose ah hits the front of the <laughs> silver drag ah <laughs> ran right into a door. Kind of, you take one point of uh, bludgeoning damage. Uh, this girl has a negative. She rolled a one on religion, so I think she would have thought that worked. It would have worked. Ah, uh, okay, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Uh. If. Um. I have 
no clue how to get this door open, I'll be honest. These books are not helpful in the slightest. Wait, did we... Did, did we finish pulling... Did we finish pulling all the books off of the shelf? Oh, we didn't. You're right. <laughs> Robert's gonna then start pulling the rest of the books off. Uh... <laughs> Zania has a great idea. Uh, you've pulled maybe about a third of them off at this point, uh, mostly sticking onto one side of the room. We'll say the western side. Uh, as you pull these un ornately decorated in gray and purple leather books off of the wall there. How many of them appear to be very similar to the one you have? Some of them may even be copies directly. But there are still lots of books. Are you all going to take all the books off the walls? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. As Zania, Robert, and Celine more gently takes the book off the wall and sets it down on the ground rather than just tossing them off like Robert does. Uh, how? what are you doing during this time? I'm going to keep investigating the door. Like, I don't... Yeah, I I as a player don't know what to do, so I don't know how what, what are you what specifically do, so. looking for in case you're trying to find something besides, like, an investigation? How to do open you have it. any <laughs> how to open it? All right, roll another investigation at disadvantage since you've looked already. Uh, that's a six. Got nothing. Six. You stare at it. Its eyes seem to almost stare back at you the longer you look at it. It's a puzzling painting, to be sure. Pepper and Summer, you sit inside the room. The dragon seems to be getting impatient. Pepper, you are muted. Chill, chill. You've been here how long? What's a couple more minutes while we figure this out for you? Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We're pretty good at getting out of uh, things. Um, again, if I had, if just hypothetically, if I had a friend called Castagon who um, was around and he wanted to come back now, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'm going to go inspect this door a little bit more. Okay. Um. As you're Sorry. doing this, the dragon begins to circle around the room like a dog trying to find a spot to bed down for the night. Uh, it seems to focus its head on the caretaker now in the center of the room. Summer, you haven't investigated and taken a look at the door yet. Go ahead and roll me an investigation without disadvantage. Ooh. And we established it's definitely not a dead body. Uh, the the caretaker the is oh the door. Oh, the caretaker <laughs> is a dead body, so we could we should probably search her too. We get two um, investigation <laughs> rolls. Great. I blah, blah, blah. that was good. That was good. Uh, Twenty, not that. Twenty. You take a look at the door. You run your fingers along the edges. Pepper, you think, oh, why didn't I think of that? As you go up around oh. it, and using your rat-like abilities, you climb all the way to the top of this door. Go all the way around and find nothing before you stare at the door in disbelief. Like, where are the hinges? There's no trap here. What is this door doing? You stare at it and you look and you look before you see two reflections from the light on Pepper's torch. Dim that it is, you see one reflection from the front of the gem and one from the back, indicating that this gem might be hollow. Huh. So, okay. why are you doing this? So, where have you been, Summer? What's going on? Is he uh, really as cute as he say he is? <laughs> I, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is hollow. Huh. I We're give it like a, a, a knife. Ding, ding, ding. You kink, kink. hit it. It <laughs> gives off a hollow noise. It sounds like a glass box as you. I kind of so poke it a little bit like. and like tap it. See if I can push it in at all. You try and push it, and like Jello, this isn't. This is like a glass. Nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> do, do I hear anything? I like Jello. Ren, roll a perception for me. Come on. All right, I'm gonna take that. That was a perception you said. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two with an eighteen. Twenty-two with an eighteen. Ren, the best way to describe it would be it sounds like almost the pitter-patter of mice, which is very apt. Rat A very <coughs> tiny, tiny noise here in the room. 
<sighs> Rin lets out a sigh and says, Is this when I leave? I I look through the eyes. I like I'm gonna like put my eye up. You boom, put your eye right up against the glass. It is still solid behind there. Whatever is behind this thing is solid silver, stone, whatever it is, but the gem itself is definitely hollow. Huh. Meh. Can you cast light inside there, Summer? Um, I can try. Um, I touch the eye and try and cast light inside. You put your hand right up against the glass and attempt to create a ball of light inside. Pepper Summer, I need you to make another strength save. <laughs> hey, 19. 19 God. from Pepper Summer. I'm, I'm, I'm Eight. I have Eight. minus one to strength saves. As uh, you feel yet again a pulse-like blast of force sending you flying against the wall. However, Pepper, before you say, you should put some light up there. You put your arm around the nose ring just in case again. You take precautions here uh, as the same thing happens again. You get pulled up against Summer. You are flown up against the dragon Can against I the catch wall. Her? I would say I mean, no because like she would have had to be up them. high to do that. Okay. Um, so... I'm, I'm... I really think I should stop touching these gems. Summer, you take hurts. <laughs> eight points of bludgeoning damage as you slam into oh, the dragon on the side. Oof. Summer, actually, roll me a perception. Seven. Seven. You I slam mean, nine, hard but... into this dragon. You feel it feels just like the stone wall. It's so heavy as you then slam into the ground and look <laughs> up at this dragon's shadowy form. You're lucky that you are a rat folk. That dim light that you see of the light before that Pepper was holding is even smaller as you're only 30 feet away, but the dragon seems to emit shadows in this room. Mm. Zinnia, well, how that didn't work, Robert... <laughs> You finally get to the last book. Robert looks at you, Zania. It's most weird. As, uh, he holds his hand up against it and pulls. And it slides freely off the shelf. Before he uh. puts it back up and kind of continues to take it off. He throws it off like it's nothing. Very valuable looking book that he just kind of tosses. Definitely dog ears a lot of the pages as they fall to the ground. We must be missing a book. <laughs> I uh, I don't know if that's how this works, Robert. I'm starting to realize maybe that wasn't the solution. Oh. Um. Well, whatever Ren did worked. What did he do? Just obviously not walk to the door. Um. Or do you have to walk like with the right foot or something? I I don't know. My nose and face already are kind of bruised from it. I don't really want to try it again. Uh, however, you can if you want to. Okay. Uh, did you do right? Either way, I'll try both. I, I did right. I did right. Robert is going to walk into the wall with his left foot. He takes one point of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is the solution, Robert. Um, can I investigate something? I don't know. I'm looking, looking at the door. What Go ahead, can I investigation. Uh, did you oh, ever right. investigate it, or did you do? Um, you just bowed to it, correct? I just bowed. Yeah. And okay. I just regular on investigation it. for me. <laughs> oh, natural twenty. Hey, hey, solid. As you look at this dragon, you you take a look up under into the nostrils of this dragon. The the metal rings that look like nose rings don't actually appear to go anywhere. They're, they're, they're just there. So they definitely are meant to pull this door, but it doesn't budge at all. It doesn't feel like it's locked on the other side. You look down the center, you actually see more stone behind it. This door doesn't look like it opens at all. Uh, wait a second, Robert. Do you, you also here, notice here? the hollowness of the gems in the eyes? Robert, do you see what I see? And I bend down lower to show him the, the wall. Uh, I don't think this door is meant to be opened. 
Oh. Uh, but, okay. but the gems. Look at the gems. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do you see? And are they low enough for me to knock on them? Yeah. Uh, the doors maybe about seven, eight feet tall. Uh, and this is the eyes of the dragon, so they sit about five feet off the ground. Gonna knock. Gonna knock on them to uh, dramatic emphasize their hollowness. <laughs> As it does so, Ren, you hear faintly, but you do hear knocking coming from behind you. I'm going to go back over and knock on the door. Not on the eyes, just on the door, because Ren wouldn't know about this. Zania, you hear boom, 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 as if knocking on glass before you hear, also very faintly, the sound of someone knocking back on the metal and stone part of the door. Oh, uh... Hello? Who? Who is it? Hello? Hello? I'm just banging on. I point. On. How? Uh, Robert replies, When? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and try again, just, aiming sleep. Yes. And and I, like, <laughs> <laughs> how? You hear Ren's voice in your head. How? Hey. I keep, I keep pointed. I'm on the other side, man. I kind of figured you were. Um, I didn't I'm leave. you used the spell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was hoping on the other side there would be a dragon and I can get them out. <laughs> Clearly, there's no dragon in here. Yeah, that's... Well, it's, I mean, that's good news that you're not alone with a dragon. Because I don't think we need a Ren's very not good bad day part three. <laughs> I would just um, leave, just to be honest. <laughs> you know what? That's that's a fair... Um, so, so far we know that the gems are hollow and we can see through them. And we can... S but the doors don't open. I reach up and thunk, thunk, thunk on the gym. You now hear a kind of echoed back knock to what you did, Zinnia, but again, hollow and distant. After he knocks, I just say, come in. <laughs> Zinnia <laughs> turns around. Do I GF <laughs> like it? No, I don't. That's what Howard do. He's trying everything. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what to do. Like... <laughs> Brian, we're only like fourth graders. You get us a tenth grade <laughs> puzzle, all right? Celine <laughs> absolutely knows what to do. She's just not saying. Of course she does. She's cool, I cast power word kill on her. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she knows what to do? Okay, I use detect thoughts. Has she figured it out? I command you to tell me. She <laughs> thinks, I hope they don't ask me how to do it, because I don't actually know how to get past this door. God damn. <laughs> It's got to do something to do with, like, a special, like, sun spear or something. So maybe we give this dragon one as well. I swear to God, if this is a Lord of the Rings speak, friend, then enter. How is going to cast Thunderstep into the floor? <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That, that's legit. That's le so there's no writing you on the story, tried right? It. What, what is the elvish word for friend? Melnoch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the only know, ones who I don't need something. to know what you're doing currently is Pepper and Summer. Ren, Zania, how? What are you doing? Uh, so there's no wording around this door, right? Just double checking. Nope. Can I cast? Um, I'm gonna put my hands to the eyes and cast Sacred Flame to try to like illuminate the eyes or something. Ah, as Zania, you put your hands up against both of the eyes here and begin to glow red uh what's everybody's strength score naturally oh, wait everybody minus one. Uh, ren zinnia how robert okay minus Pick one two minus not the one. modifier your strength is more than two zinnia <laughs> the oh, regular oh. it's eight wait what eight strength. 15 how yours was minus one Okay, Zinnia, as you put your hands up to the gem eyes here, you light a flame inside them. And when you do, the flame immediately turns a bright purple. As you turn, you hear a gust of wind 
and the doorway that you came from seems to fade like a mirage before you as a long hallway with a velvet purple carpet enters its place. <laughs> oh, fuck! What Man, happened? It Ren! <laughs> uh, Ren, I think I got it this time, but it's behind us, all which means... I, all it... I hear is... <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't used message. <laughs> this is true. This is true. You say how uh robert celine i think i got it and they're like yeah no <laughs> thought so <laughs> uh pepper and summer let's go to you the dragon seems to be quite angry at this point as you keep knocking it into the wall it breathes the Wait, shadows leader. back in once more and looks down towards you before it says get me out of here little rat and almost like spaghetti you begin to hear a slurping sound as it puts its head towards the caretaker's shadows that come off of the purple fires on the wall as it seems to breathe them in and suck the shadows from the ground. You're looking at the caretaker. It seems to lose shadows seemingly impossibly as there are four torches in here, none of them casting a shadow in any direction below this caretaker. And as such, even the body of the caretaker looks odd as no shadow comes off its arms onto her body. She begins to fade from view almost entirely, beginning to lose her opaqueness as if you took the slider and went slowly down to zero over the next 20 seconds before the caretaker vanishes before your eyes. Amazing. Look, buddy, you're a dragon. You're smart. You know that right now you haven't been able to get out for how many years? You actually have a couple of individuals here who are trying to get you out. Do you think just chilling for a minute or two while we work things out is better than potentially ruining the chances of the next lot of people not wanting to get you out? Roll of persuasion. Better play. Hey, no, 13. 13. The dragon finishes absorbing whatever shadows came off of this caretaker before it slumps forward towards you, Pepper, low to the ground, crawling with its hands. Now, looking at it, it seems to have almost 12 feet or hands or whatever you would call it that span the length of its body. It says, I have been down here for a millennia. I need out. Get me out of here. Now. Working on it. You seem to be at the very end of your ropes here as there are no shadows left. As it has inhaled them, you don't have much time in your mind. Oh. We've got plenty of time. If you decide to kill us, then it's you're going to have so much more time down here. It's that not was saying that. Thing. That was me saying that. Oh, I saw a Ryan thing. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to get in that line. <laughs> We've got but plenty of time if here. If you don't chill, you're never going to get out of here. Take one of those big breaths and then relax it out. Sit over there so that if we get flung back again, we're not flinging into you. And give us a few more minutes on the door. What have you got to lose? It curls upwards towards the top of this cylinder-like room and looks down towards you, its eyes blazingly purple and bright now as it looks down at you. The fire seems to be near angry in its eyes, but it sits there waiting patiently. Quote-unquote. So, All right, sunshine. Sorry, other than the light that I cast, is there any other light in the room? Or is it just our dark vision that's letting us see? There are now. Uh, you could see they existed before, but once he pulled the shadows away, you can see them fully. As there are no shadows currently in the room besides what you're being cast, and the four purple torches that line the sides of the room. You have the light of the torch in Pepper's hand that is not a fire, it is light. Uh, and the four flame or purple flames, as well as the flames in the shadow dragon's eyes. If we just, if we just 
to like get rid of the lights, then won't we like not have any shadows for us for him to eat? But that's not really helping the situation. Well, he doesn't seem very nice. Why would you be nice if you were? Well, listen, actually, if anyone knows anything about being stuck in a hole for way too long, oh, Claire, we're really gonna do this. We're really gonna do this. This is not the time to talk What's about. That? Oh, yeah, yeah. We made, everyone made choices, mate. Everyone made choices, okay? We're not going anywhere right now, right? Seriously. Right. That hole was not fun. Well, I'm dropping light. It just seems light to get me. I appears from the torch. There are still the four purple flames, and everything is colored in a purple outline now with no white light to cast in the room. Like but in the fight, I'll light the torch. So they're like, ha, huh, you can't extinguish my torch. You can't extinguish my flame, Dad. <laughs> As you yeah. light the torch up and hold it. I can't <laughs> not do this. Pebble, uh, Summer walks over and blows it out. <laughs> it is a large torch. Uh, if you want to try and blow yeah. out the fire, um, give it me a doesn't have to work, but she's going to try. Okay, yeah, you kind of angrily and defiantly. <laughs> it is a heavy flame with an oil lit torch. It doesn't go out, uh, but you do so defiantly attempt to. Go check on go check on the penguiny thing you've got there. My god, I've got this. And I walk back towards the door. Pepper. You look at it, trying to figure a way out of here once again. Roll me another investigation at disadvantage. That's a 19 and an 11. So investigation at Did you say advantage or disadvantage? Disadvantage. disadvantage. 13. 13. You focus on the eyes this time. Having something to look at, you crawl all the way up to the side of it, and the eyes look to be protruding a little bit outwards. You could even get your hand on one of them, but you're not certain that you get enough of a grip to be able to pull one out, uh, but they seem to be sticking out a little bit from the face. I sort of go in as close as I can, like looking inside, sort of bring the torch in close, and can I see anything inside it? Uh... As you say, bring the torch in close. Being that you are literally up there and investigating it as best you can, you look into the glass. You see no reflection of the room around you. You only see the reflection of the lights in the room and the light in your hand. You don't see the dragon on the wall. You don't see your own eye looking in. You don't even see Summer in the room. <clears throat> got something to do with reflections so, um sunshine you're muted no response I, I'm not, am i muted no not you no so. not you oh the, the classic meter is muted <laughs> she's back <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to make sure that you don't hear background noise thanks drew um <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm just gonna grumble about you know the smartest rat ever, just overachieving ever, working out about reflections. Don't even need to get out; oh. just teleported. My God, why? All right, I am um, looking. While well, looking there, I put out the torch. Okay, you stamp it out, throw cloth over it, get it all. No oxygen. Is there, yeah, well, I'll, I'll do it while I'm up next to the yep. yeah the eye. I, I now see only four reflections. Correct. Hey, uh, Sorfin, um, do you mind if we turn out these torches for a minute? I have an idea. It seems to look at you, but doesn't give any disapproving response. Sunshine, go blow those go blow those ones out. Maybe they'll respond better. That's what I said earlier, but <laughs> so, so where you go over... <laughs> You use a little bit of your magic to create fey like uh, <laughs> particles that basically uh, act like the fire extinguishers as they touch uh, the fire slowly dousing the flame, reducing the oxygen being taken from these fires here. Before you find yourself in SpongeBob level advanced darkness. <laughs> Not only is this thing producing shadows, you have no light sources here to even get the silhouettes of. Your vision as rat folks with your literal advanced dark vision is the only reason you can see 
even five feet in front of your face. I will relight my torch. You sparks. You can see as the torch beams floats in the air or casting a bit of light around you, Summer Pepper. Anything happening with the eye? Can I see it move between one eye and the other? Behind me? In front of me? You see it move just like it would in a mirror. You just don't see the wooden stick part of the torch. You don't see yourself. You don't see Summer. You don't see the dragon. Well, Sorfin, I can see how you've been stuck in here for so long. What a puzzle. <laughs> uh, do you want me to light the torches again? Or and you seem to be the expert on this dark room, Pep. As I'll let you two think on that for a minute, let's go back to Zania, Howe, Ren, Robert, and Celine. Zania and Howe, you now look back at the doorway that you came from and see a very dark room, but a purple light at the end of it. Maybe about a hundred foot long hallway with two torches of purple flame, just like in the room that you're in. If you want to go look inside the doorway, you could probably see what's in there. Other than that, you only barely get the outline of the purple velvet rug that seems to line the floor like a red carpet. Wait, you said it's a hundred foot long hallway? Yeah. I have 120 feet of true dark vision. Yeah. Are you uh, so you you're basically standing at the edge to where you can see that there is one? If you want to go look into the doorway, you can see in there as well. Yeah, I'll go step up to it because I got my okay. devil sight. So if it's if anything's in darkness, I can see it. As you look in there, the lights of the purple flame at the end of the hallway kind of show off that there is a chair with more books around it, seemingly mimicking the room that you're in here, but only one chair with two purple flames lighting something up. There seems to be a person sitting in this chair. The hallway between where you're at and that person is just a room filled with columns, almost like a king's hallway before you would get up to the throne room, except there is no increase in elevation to where this chair and these books are. There are columns with empty spots for um, torches to be set in, but no sitting torches on these columns, which is why the room itself is quite dark, except for where this person sits at the end of the room. Do they see me? Or are they just reading? They're just reading. Um, I'm gonna walk forward, I guess, towards the person reading. You walk into the room. Zinnia, Robert, Celine, you all see how walk into this room. No problem. This room that you just went down the stairs from a moment ago. I look back to the door that Ren just stepped through, and I'm going to yell into it. Uh, Ren, we kind of got something figured out. You yell pretty loudly. Ren, you hear someone seeming to yell through the door, but you can't understand the words. It's, it sounds like you're listening to the parents in Charlie Brown. You start pointing, <laughs> what? 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 Point, before Zania very loudly, you hear what <laughs> in your mind? <laughs> oh, uh, Ren, I we we got something uh, figured out back here. There's like a long hallway now that appeared where we just came from. Uh, oh, okay. So... And Ren's gonna reappear right in front of him using Dimension Door again. Okay. And with that, uh, as a bonus action, I am sacrificing a third level spell so I can regain all my spell points. So then I can again use them to get a fourth level spell back. <laughs> You, you see Ren quickly poof into the room before Ren basically does a <sighs> <laughs> just kind of uh, something you've seen Pepper do many a times. Just kind of, okay, shake it off before. Okay, uh, Ren, you look and now see this hallway coming from the spiral staircase that you once were. It is no longer there. Now there is this hallway and you see how walking through it towards lights at the end. Uh... I hate this place. <laughs> and Rin's gonna start like walking up the staircase and then just stop. There's no staircase there anymore. That room has oh, disappeared no. and it's now the hallway. Oh no. It's not my favorite. Rin just either. looks at where... But there was a staircase. And then I, I know. I could have left. 
Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go in front of you? <laughs> and Ren just goes and follows how. <laughs> All right. Um, if everyone else is going to go, I think I'll be the end. That way, Robert's in front, and Selena's in front, and I'll take the, the tail end. Okay. You all walk through this doorway here. As all of you enter onto the other side. All of us. The room that you just saw, save Pepper and Summer. The room that you were just in, this small little library of sorts, begins to fade from vision. As another door, much like the one you saw before, almost like a mirage, enters and takes its place. How you're about halfway down at this point, since you were the first one to walk through. A man sits there with long, curly hair. Think Weird Al Yankovic uh, is the best way I can describe it. Um, really long, uh, kind of grayish-white curly hair, and equally pale in gray skin. Uh, too unkin to yours, how, but yours is a little bit purple in hue. As he <clears throat> closes the book, or he kind of looks over at you, awaiting you to approach, but just kind of looks at you quizzically. Hey. Hello. How's it going? Who speaks under common? Zania? Ren? Either of you? The rat folk. <laughs> okay. Uh, how, speaking back to you in under common, in a similar drow-like language, he speaks to you, and Zania and Ren, this now sounds like gibberish as you're in this room. It echoes as he speaks and says, Why have you approached? Have they sent you? Are you new? Yeah. I, uh... I'm new. I'm looking for, a, uh, You know, someone went to, uh... T take care of things with, uh... You know... She who we praise. Um... So, trying to find that room, just a uh, report to them. <laughs> Roll a deception. <laughs> How you like a 24 <laughs> on Hal's awkward small talk? Oh, <laughs> uh, I haven't used one in a while. How about go fuck yourself? Uh... <laughs> Okay. Um, Purely because that was so awkward, I can't let a 24 slide without trying. Uh, uh, okay, well, 14 plus 7, so 23 this time. <laughs> Just a 21. little bit worse. Yeah. 21, 14. Yeah, 21. As, uh, how oh, yeah, you... 21. I can do math. <laughs> You're like, she will not be praised. Wow. <laughs> As <laughs> Zania, Ren, you don't understand what he's saying, but you... how does a kissing motion with his hands? <laughs> Before the man stands, it says, oh, I hate it. It's not a she. It isn't anything. It... Come, come, and the rest of you come. I, th I thought this would be a different day. I lost track. Broach to the chair. Seems to beckon all of you forward. In common, he speaks this time. Zinia. Oh, okay. Then I'll waddle up. All right, bet. And I go to the chair. How you go over and sit down in the chair uh, as he stands up. Ren, Zania, Robert, Celine all approach, looking at this man in what are... The best way to describe it would be naval linens like what you would see in pirates of the caribbean like the navy that is actual navy would wear a very kind of ornate looking uh trench coat thing in blue and purple and gold he stands there looking very aristocratic as he uh looks down at all of you and says okay obviously you don't know what's going on i understand always time for new people how did you hear about this? Why why did no one come with you, as a matter of fact? Did they just send you in here alone? He speaks to Well, uh, I, uh, we were upstairs, you know, browsing some wares, and, uh, the, the lovely bookkeeper 
uh, notice that I myself am covered in cult adorned tattoos of a past life that I have been a part of. And they had questioned if I was looking for a new way of life and allegiance. And I said, heck yeah, and I have some friends. So here's the friends. Um, orientation was a very brief conversation upstairs. And then the lady up there didn't even give us her name, just left the store and opened a gateway for us and said, uh, you will meet a very handsome drow down there who will give us the rest of the explanation and we will see those who are feeding the dragons. So yeah, it was, it felt a little rushed, but honestly my past, past cult, uh, they, <laughs> let's just say it wasn't exactly well maintained there. So I'm used to it. He speaks to you back in Undercommon. Ah, you're here to feed the dragon, then. Are they... He says in Undercommon... <laughs> Feeder and feedies, yes. Ah. But remember, they're, they're good. They're good friends. Well... They should be so honored, then. Uh, he begins to speak in common to you all and says, You've uh, been blessed to come down here and consider yourselves lucky. You, as he uh, tosses the book that he was reading to you, Hal, uh, it seems to be a more immaculate version to the one that you saw before, a silver face of the dragon inlaid into the book itself. Uh, seems to be a valuable text of sorts, where he says... Let's show you, then, to where you're to be. Come with me. And, matter of fact, you as well, pointing back to how I think it's best that you come. Uh, I, if you have not seen, then you should. Yes, I would like it. So let's all go together. And while we're walking, I'm going to stand just behind him, and I'm using sending, and I'm going to fill everyone in, because I have all, Robert, Zinnia, and uh, Ren with my plan through sending, of just like a, yo, this guy thinks we're going to feed him, so the second we get to this room, w like, we are finding how to get Pepper out, because Hao doesn't know that Summer's there. Um, he's like, we're finding how to get Pepper out, and we're murking this guy. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> you tell Pepper and Summer? As well, or just Zinnia, Ren, etc. Well, they don't. Zinnia, Ren, and Robert. Um, just because I feel like Pepper has enough on their plate right now. Celine's being that she can't be in the loop is just kind of <laughs> going along with this possible sacrifice. Uh, but with this possible sacrifice, it seems like a solid place to stop. It is currently seven fifty-eight, or almost 8 o'clock. How about we come back at 8.05, so in seven minutes, everybody. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure you enter for the giveaway so you can win some... Are we doing the Purple Heart or the Infinite Ice first? Purple Heart first. Purple, purple Heart. Make sure you enter for that because uh, like we'll do that giveaway in this right place. quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so if you haven't done so, make sure you enter that, and we'll be right back. B-R-B. Welcome back to more Red Wagon Inn. Hope y'all like that music. Doesn't it absolutely bop though? Uh, just gotta say, super happy with that being the theme song. That was uh, music to my ears, quite literally. Uh, so words mythologic, it absolutely well done. Uh, if you haven't entered, basically too bad. Cause was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> too bad. And we're picking the winner. Let's go ahead and, and pull it. it's Magpie. Magpie Skies, congratulations. Right, Magpie. I'm super jelly. Two, and I'll give you either. I said either number one or send you number two. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Uh, where was the Where was the drum roll? You've been gone too long. We, so yeah, we don't know. do drum rolls anymore. That's we're, so, we're nothing, we're nothing if not efficient <laughs> anymore. Where, man? Thank you, man. <laughs> Here's your gift to get out of here. <laughs> get back to the action. That's what we do. So again, you're gonna win one of these purple heart dice. Congratulations. And die. die, one of these dice, which is correct. Uh, and uh, then if you haven't done so yet, make sure you get ready to enter for the other giveaway for part two. But for us, we're continuing right where we left off. Pepper and Summer, what are you two doing? As the dragon sits there, seemingly impatiently, shadows enveloped towards it. 
The only light in the room is the torch that you hold, Pepper. Sunshine, it's like you're not here. It's, it's like it's like paradise, but not. But because you want <laughs> sunshine in paradise. But, but come and check this out. Look, grab this. Oh, actually, you look at the look at the the the, the eye, and I'm going to walk over here, and I disappear. Okay, I have you, a look. You take a look at the eyes, and you see, even through your face, you're looking at it directly on. You see the fire behind you that Pepper is waving around quite quickly. You're not sure how it should see that, let alone not see you or the dragon or Pepper. It's confusing. Should we light ourselves on fire? Yeah. No, no, probably bad. No, we did that once, but mm -hmm. that was with the circus and it wasn't really that exciting. True, true. Um, well, weird. Why? So we're not really here? What if I just, and I just try and walk through the door? <laughs> Same maneuver as Zania. You, hmm. <laughs> you bop your nose on it, and you take one point of bludgeoning damage. No, nah. it'll work. I mean, what? Nah. Never mind. <laughs> what happens if the fire can go through the door? And I grab the um, the fire, and I like the light fire itself, and push it through the door. Uh, which part of the door? I'll do it. The door. Avoid the, the eyes. You try and stick it through the mouth of the dragon, and as you do so, you pull torch back and boop, slams like it would against any piece of metal or stone wall. Mm, I just start slamming everywhere. You just start <laughs> beating like on the door everything. with the torch. Uh, let me see. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you do so, uh, with my nat one to figure out in what comedic way you uh, do this. Uh, you start just banging on the door with the fiery part of the torch, like, the fire has to go through, fire hot, as you like, keep just slamming against it before you say, you try for like five minutes before you just say, I give up, and you throw the torch behind you, and when you do so, uh, the flaming part of the torch hits the gem. And when it does so, the fire from the torch is immediately snuffed out, but the fire appears in both of the eyes of this door begins to yeah. light up brilliantly before the door do that in the first place fades away i would if it was a, if it was lit up and not a magical light <laughs> you see into a room with three other incredibly giant doors one to the left and the right of you, both seem to be 100 feet tall. However, the one that eclipses you directly in front must near 500 feet tall. This door is enormous. There are braziers big enough for an entire building to fit inside, with a glass channel nearing maybe 10 or 20 of you long that span this stone ground here that seem to connect via glass tubes to these braziers. This is a room befitting giants. Sorfin, door one! Sorfin slams onto the ground, its shadows seeming to pour out from it. The room in there is quite dark. There is no light inside the room. Sorfin seems to crawl over somewhat like a cat, somewhat like a snake, out this doorway and into the room. Isn't we sort of chained, or is the chains more so like a, an aesthetic thing? The chains exist there, but Sorfin was not the thing chained in the room, if there ever was something. So there's chains, but not attached to anything? There's like collars in which the chains oh. are, but Sorfin doesn't have any indication that it was ever the thing chained. I head out with Summer and Pepper, you follow Sorfin into the room. Again, quite dark, and you no longer have a flame because it was extinguished from your torch. In this room, you see nothing but the skyscraper-sized walls that hold up these braziers with these glass tubes that go down and into large chasms that span entire rivers beneath these glass walkways below you connect all of the braziers nearing these ginormous doors. Sorfin looks around, 
before beginning to actually fly for the first time instead of crawling around this room, flying upwards like a snake into the room, out and around. There's some big ass torches up there. Sunshine? Are we are we meant to put those out as well? Well they're not on at the moment. Do we have to put them on and then out? No. Yeah. Uh, here and I sort of materialize um, the tail. Do you want to go try lighting one of them? I guess. I let the tail lift me up to the torch and I try and light them. You are elevated what must be 100 feet in the air to you, quite high as you hold on to the tail and this huge building-sized brazier. Think, all right, as you just cast with your prestidigitation a spark on the edge of one of the logs in here. You have to catch it a few times before, almost like catching a bit of lighter fluid in a uh, bonfire, it suddenly erupts and begins to flow underneath all of the glass channels and through and up all of the other braziers. When it does so, it begins to turn into a giant purple flame. Pepper, you currently stand atop a glass plateau, a lake of fire of purple flame stands beneath your feet. Luckily, that glass is preventing you from being burned alive as you see uh, Sorfin floating through the air. Suddenly, the other doors in this room begin to fade away. Ooh. This is so pretty. Wow. Sorfin yeah. floats. Good job, sis. Do you yell out? Yeah. Yeah, good job, sis. And then I'll get the tail to slowly come back down. As uh, we're going to go over to Ren, Zinnia, Howe, Robert, Celine, and their new Weird Owl-esque drow friend, walking back the way you came. There's a doorway there that uh, the drow man leads you to before waving his hand up and seeming to create purple flames in the eyes of this doorway. When he does so, the hallway that you're in seems to fade into the book room that you were once in before. Suddenly, like a mirage or an illusion fading in the desert, find yourselves back in the <clears throat> book room, all of the books strewn out along the floor. He's, Good God. What? Did, did you... What did you... Who threw the texts onto the floor? It wasn't like that when we got here, was it? Yeah, I don't... I don't remember there being books on the floor. I think this room was immaculate. Yeah, there was just that one book we, you know, moved on the shelf. Roll a deception, Ren. It's it's not a deception, though. That's the truth. When we got oh, you're there... You're talking about upstairs, though. Where he's no, no, no. We're talking about we're downstairs. The, we're in the first room. Ren, oh, in the, in the okay. definitely, yeah. <laughs> Again, I wasn't there. I don't know. You were there for a third of it. <laughs> Can I be assisting for this? Because how is... Like joining the lie? A deception, you say? Yeah, he can have advantage on that. I'll let you. Okay. Because, yeah, how is right. also like, what? I get advantage? Because right now it's a 28. Yeah, you have advantage. Do it again. Get that natty. <laughs> Do it again. I want that I 30. 30. Give me it. <laughs> uh, no, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a 29 now with advantage. As you say... Uh, it wasn't like this. I, it was immaculate when we came in here, and I was like, "Yeah, we we were just here too." Isn't that crazy? Uh, before seeming to aid you in this lie, the doorway that you all once saw that was your obstacle fades from view. And Ren, you see the room that you were once in, with the glass walkways below and the four braziers lit in a bright, bright purple. Huh, that's where I was. Whoever did this will absolutely pay. I'm keeping an eye on you, but if you see anything suspicious, you tell me now. If the braziers are lit, you may have trouble. Why? What does it mean if the braziers are lit? 
he leans in and whispers to you and Undercommon, do not have fear for alarm, but the braziers being lit on all doors, and if I am not there to help contain the dragon, then fear for the safety of everyone. Mm. Do not react. Act calm. For if you are to sacrifice these to the shadow dragon, they may run if you give them any cause to. How's mask goes blank? <laughs> As the man stands up, seemingly in control of the situation and in common, he says, Good. Just ex exactly as I planned with the lights. Come with me. <laughs> are, you, are you standing with everyone? He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't know that they know, but I tell them. <laughs> I start preparing a third level spell. I just go viable. <laughs> Actually, it's not. <laughs> Ren, you ready a spell? What are you waiting for? What would be your trigger to make this happen? For this guy to cast any spells. Gotcha. Counterspell at the ready, I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As, uh, <laughs> he walks into the room. Pepper, Summer. A giant elvish man with dark gray skin and long curly hair going to the midway of his back, standing as tall as any cloud giant you've ever heard in a rumor, in a myth. This being stands above you like a god. As he walks in, you hear the trembling of the floor shake beneath his mighty feet. You hear like a march of these giants. More begin to pour into the room. Sorfin flies towards you, towards the corner of the crack as if to hide. Before you see your friends, how Zania, Ren, Robert, Celine. Summer, you don't really know who Celine is, but people walk in. Your friends themselves are giant gods? What the hell is going on here? As you all sit so tiny next to the corner of where these braziers sit. So How'd they get so fucking big? I don't know. Must have been in the milk. Um... Soften. Do you know anything? What the fuck? Those things are huge. Sorfin cowers into the corner where the braziers barely provide any light down into a small bit of the wall that doesn't reflect anything upwards. As dark as he can possibly get, he seems to blend in quite heavily. As you two stand out quite literally like mice at this point, are very tiny, very small, but not... How rude first point. As with all of your passive perceptions, everybody else, you walk into the room and you see an empty hallway directly in front of you, seeming to be almost like a bunk room or a barracks of sorts. There are beds that are strewn out across this room, seeming to be six beds with purple velvet sheets, all of them having a bookshelf nearby and a small chest at the foot of each bed. Three people lay on these beds asleep. To your right, you see a giant doorway, just like you saw before, Ren, is now open. You see stairs that span ten feet tall per step. You have no <clears throat> idea what could possibly live in such a large opening. What manner of beast or creature could have Use steps like these. Something giant lives past this doorway. Before you look to the left and see now a tiny little hole in the wall, much like the door you saw earlier, Ren, but it is open. Almost like a cartoonish mouse hole. It's got that kind of curved mm. spot to it, but you can't really see into that. I hate everything about this. The man looks and says, Okay. He's speaking again in undercommon. Summer Pepper, what sounds like the mighty voice of Zeus, speaks out in undercommon, a language okay. you understand. He speaks to you, Hound says, This is bad. Another student must have let 
the orphan moose. But where? Where indeed? Sorfin. I'm sorry. Did, what about you? Did you say Sorfin? Yes, the living shadow. I keep it uh, small okay. and contained so that it cannot harm us on its own, but just assured if it were oh. its normal size, we would have problems, but I am not worried. No one can increase off in size except me. Safe for the moment, but if you see even a fly, that could be the dragon. You say so. Just in case that's someone those books were knocked over and you said there was danger if should my priority to be to protect you then like if you get incapacitated is orphan free i will do the protecting you student oh okay that's if orphan uh, is free it cannot be but the size of a small housefly or dragonfly you can't have gotten far. Hi, <laughs> Ryan. GFY. You know what? I'm actually not taking the GFY because Bobo said it. Oh. And I'm giving Bobo a GFY. Bobo's oh, a no. Sorry, Bobo. Hey, some, does that mean we're also tiny flies? That seems unlikely. Yeah, but Sorkman's a tiny fly right now, supposedly. But I know how big I am. Yeah, but you also know magic. Uh, so I mean, we've seen some shit. But no one cast any magic on me. Did someone cast magic on you? Mm -hmm. We got a freaking shadow dragon. It must be the room. So, like, if we were to just like accidentally stab and murder that guy, then you could probably just leave, right, Sorfin? Hey, Sorfin, can you get us up to like his neck? You whisper over to Sorfin in the corner of the room. Sorfin seems to sit, trying its best not to move, not to cause any suspicion. It almost looks like a shadow on the wall. For you, it is giant, but compared to the gods that stand before you, it might be the size of someone's big toe. Cowers before you. It seems to look back and upwards towards this being and back at you, kind of not sure what to do. Scared. Pepper. Got this, man. If we could get up there and then, like, do you know much about brains? Like, if we got into that dude's ears, do you think there's, like, some strings or something in there? Maybe yes, that we could be too, for sure. Well, I thought we might be able to, you know, like, puppet him, right? That's how brains work, right? Tiny little people puppet you from inside your brain. I mean, why not? We, we've never had the chance to try this before. It sounds amazing. So, 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 so often, if you can fly me up, you can just float, right, with the tail. Sis, you can, like, invisible as us. Yeah, you? yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. As you hey, so, say, you can make us invisible or invisible us, <laughs> as the way you describe it. Sorfin slinks over towards you at the idea and looks at you, though his eyes are just fire, what once was evil and downward look up, leading at you, Summer. Did you, oh, little boy. Do you want me to make you invisible or do you not want me to get in its ear? Invisible. It's, it's oh, okay. escape. But you're going you're gonna to be nice to people. You're not going to eat all of their shadows, are you? Not the whole world's shadows. I Just must stop. consume shadows. Oh, I yeah, but like, more like, lack of like lampshades and stuff like that. Does that work? Can you eat, I eat like, would or does that have to be any shadows I could? Just yeah. if I could get out of here. Fine, we can make you shadows that aren't attached to people. It's like, <laughs> like a vegan shadow dragon. We would be fine. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll make you guys invisible then. Summer <laughs> throws up a puff of glitter that seems to stick to Pepper and Sorfin equally, causing them to disappear. At that, there is suddenly a change in what's in the room. That would be... That sounds <laughs> really great. Um, 
That but nothing I, happens, I, actually. Uh, Zinnia, Ren, how... This man looks around, he looks down in the hole, he kind of gets down on his knees and looks into the room. As this happens, Summer, Pepper, you see this godly figure <clears throat> kneel down and get right near your face as he looks into the room. He sticks his pinky inside the hole of this and tries, like somebody does in their ear, trying to see if there's anything in there. But he will light up. <laughs> nothing seems to come out as he says, Ugh. Sofin is gone. I will find that dragon, put it back in its cage. First, we must see which of my allies did this. Hmm. Not to be trusted. You understand? Trust only me. Trust the words of others. It's obviously, someone has deceived us. Yeah, word. <laughs> um. Before he turns, I, looking to Zania, Rarber, and Celine, and says, "Just a moment, then. Uh, we have uh, something. Uh, one of my cats has gone missing, and I think that uh, I should like to find it yet again. So, just patiently, uh, if you would wait and follow us." It's a weird place to lose a cat. Are you sending and say the cat is a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> as, also, as a side note, Summer, you wouldn't recognize Ren. Ren is not in Ren's form, also, by the way. I also, just to uh, retcon what just happened a little bit, am not as powerful as you think I am, and I can't cast invisibility on three people. <laughs> I can cast it on one. Ah, who do you make invisible? <laughs> I only have second level spell slots, so uh <laughs> You're level seven. I multiclassed multiclassed. I oh, multiclassed. That's right. Yeah. Downsides I, of multiclassing. I, I don't have I don't have all these powerful spell slots you guys have. So let's revert back for just a minute. Do you make yourself <laughs> Sorfin or Pepper invisible? I'm gonna make Sorfin invisible. Beautiful. Yeah. So Aww. instead <laughs> What happens is this man, this god, Summer and Pepper, gets down and kneels to look through the small mouse hole. Sorfin I is gone. You have no idea where Sorfin is. However, Pepper, Summer, is coming down towards you quickly. Anything you're doing? Get up as much as we can against the wall. As so I shouldn't both... run into his ear. Rush to the wall. As he gets down, he looks as ah! Instead of all the things he said before, he yells out and comes, ah! There's you! Before he reaches down with his fingers to pick the two rat folks, now the size of actual mice, up with his fingers. I bite him. I try to evade him. Okay. Uh, roll a dexterity save, Pepper. Uh, and Summer, roll an attack with your teeth. Improvised weapon. Wow, so... So rats uh, dismantled all those books and got in here. Um, seems like a real security threat. He hasn't I say that pulled them up yet for you to see them. Uh, oh, okay. Side. Yeah, yeah. 18 on decks. 18 on decks, <laughs> Summer. Um, is so it'll this just be plus, like... plus strength. Yeah, no yeah. No proficiency. Yeah. yeah, so the problem with that is that I have minus one to strength. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So do I do, do I like, do I just like gently lick him? What did, you, what did you get? Ah. I rolled an 11, but I can't so do like an arm strike. Because... As uh, you try and bite <laughs> into it, same. his gloved hand is so thick to you, okay. it's the equivalent of like a foot thick. So you try and bite against it as he picks you up, trying your best to get out. Uh, but this is the equivalent of like trying to bite through a bed to get to some thing on the other side of a bed uh, as pepper you instead jump up and land on his hand as he like squeezes his little fingers uh you can do anything you like now that you're on top of his hand but currently you see him anything pick some like. anything that you like <sighs> well don't say that to alex Go ahead. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna let the dice decide actually no can i ask chat for a high <laughs> or low oh Ooh. Because I have an amazing idea, but it's so bad, I'm going to do it only on if I match what chat says. Hi, low, ooh. Chat is <laughs> divided. 
Oh, I it's all high. high. Yeah. Yeah, it's all high. One low. All right, here we go. 15 is a high. I take uh -oh. out the pile of elemental glitter and smash it onto his, uh, his hand. So, as you do so, this vial, especially since you're already mini, is a microscopic vial by comparison. Uh, as you take it and, aha, you hear it shatter on his hardened leather glove. When it does so, it glitter goes flying everywhere, and his hand lights up like a beacon. Everyone around this man who has suddenly leaned onto the ground sees a tiny speck of light that they actually have to like cover their eyes for for just a moment. Uh, as Summer, you've seen something quite similar to this before. His hand appears to be covered in a near fairy fire like glitter. Okay. You could definitely hit him more easily, Pepper. Uh-huh. As um, he uh, He's gonna go to swat you off of his hand, Pepper, while he's holding Summer. So roll me another deck save. Wonderful. I will roll another deck save. That is not as good, but I have a good plus, which is plus six. That's fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh you do get swatted away, actually, uh, with this giant wall-like hand. It pushes against you so heavily. You, for the first time, feel basically what Summer did as you are thrown against the back wall. Uh, when this happens, you are going to take... Ah, uh, not terrible. Ten points of bludgeoning damage. As this happens, Hal, Zania, Ren, <laughs> Robert, and Selene see a tiny mouse in black garb standing upright thinner than a normal mouse fly against the stone wall before boom, kind of sticking to it and <laughs> moving back you recognize this small little action figure ran immediately ah found salt or pepper <laughs> this wizard on his hands and knees looks at you and says you know this little rat hey you yell up at it. Hi. It's like a super Alvin and the Chipmunk. Oh. Before. They're the not. I wait for that glitter to start growing. Go ahead, Zania. Oh, they're not usually this small. <laughs> Before it leans down and tries to grab you once again, Pepper. Can I cast a spell? Yeah, totally. Can I? It's not going to work, but... Can I try and cast Charm Person? Yeah, absolutely. Um, wisdom save. You look at him and say, Hey! And, but everybody else just hears like a whisper like, Hey! <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Hey! hey look at me! <laughs> Before whoosh, I you do an me. incredible oh, puff of pink perfume-like magic that flies up in the air, but to everybody else, it just is like a little a spritz of mist uh, that flies out of his hand before he... Take this, bitch! <laughs> before he wipes it away in the air and the wind, seeming to unaffect him, before he, as a <laughs> kind of safety measure, squeezes you with his finger, trying to hurt Ow. you a little bit, uh, I need a strength save from you. Oh, well, let's just assume I failed that. 14. Yep. Uh, so you feel uh, he's not trying to kill you or pop you, but he's definitely trying to hurt you. Uh, you're going to take 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, If I may, could we just make them regular size and, and talk with them? And I'm saying this in Undercommon. I didn't know my friends knew these rats. And I think it'd be beneficial to get more information. Roll a deception, since you're saying you don't know them, quote-unquote. Also, Summer, I need you to make a con save. For concentration. Shit. That is a 26. 19. 19. I'll re-roll if you want to use my last GFY. I see you thinking about it. No, no, no. Did you, did you say 26 or 19? I rolled 19, it total it, is 26. It. Okay, I was like, hold on, how's that? how'd you... Gotcha, gotcha. You rolled Summer, 20. what was your... Uh, it's a 23-19! 12. 12. 
that's enough. You're good. Storfin mm -hmm. is still invisible. Uh, so you say, look, I, I don't even know he knew these rats. Can we just make him big? We can talk to him as he looks up and says, fine. Restrain them when I do before uh, holding his hand outwards uh, begins to shoot a sparkle of purple and black magic towards you summer as you're basically cursing him like ah, let go of me let go of me before summer becomes summer size three foot tall standing before all of you pepper the same bit of magic flies towards you yeah absolutely i'm going to go soften if you need me get that beam Yo, if you had your, your Faith Thief thing and you used that on Sorfin, oh I my god. No, I know, I just thought of it now. I was like, holy. <laughs> but I, this I, I, room I, I, just suddenly... <laughs> I vowed to always use it on stupid things. So. <laughs> You're unaware of that where Sorfin is. He may be trying to get in front of that beam, but if he oh, did, so. he was too late. As you feel yourself... You yelled out Sorfin, find that beam, though. Ren, but I was just big, so it's very hard to hear me. Is it? Can I, can I drop counter spell and have another spell prepared? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, Zania, Robert, Celine, you suddenly see two regular-sized rat folk sitting before you. Oh, you guys shrunk. You're not wrong, actually, to your perspective. Um. Um, Hi, did, guys. Shrink, did he shrink oh us? My. Robert asked. Summer, Are you sending to Robert and say you're normal sized? They grew. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. Cool. Yeah, nice cool. to see you too, Robert. <laughs> um, yes, uh, we're saying that we knew you, right? Uh, Robert no, is not one for subterfuge since it seems that, uh, how was like, yeah, they knew him, but I didn't. <laughs> so we're saying that we knew you, right? <laughs> Wait, Summer, is that really you? Yeah. She's a doppelganger. Of course it's her. Come on. I mean, I... if I knew I was going to get this good of a reception when I came back, I would have come back a lot sooner. Holy. I, I'm sorry. There's just a lot of illusion going on right now. I don't know what to trust. Um, Welcome back to this dungeon. It uh, really is, I'm though. Sure the welcome that you were so looking for. <laughs> ah, you know, we always end up in weird places. <sighs> I'm going, well, if I'm allowed to, go up and give Robert a hug and give Zania a hug as well. Robert, Zania, Summer embrace in a incredibly large hug. Celine, just, oh, that's sweet. Uh, I'm going as... to yep. create a cup with my hand sort of behind my, my, um, my back, hoping that um, Sorfin hops Surfin in. Sorfin gets the idea. Okay. Yeah. As Pepper, you stand um, there. Ren? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Trying to get the drow's attention. He stands up, kind of wiping the dust off of his knees. <sighs> um, yes. Can you take a look right here? And then opening that up, uh, Ren's casting Hypnotic Pattern. <laughs> Wait, uh, Hypnotic Pattern? Isn't that an area? Doesn't that hit all of us? <laughs> yup. <laughs> so, being that you say, look here, this man is a spellcaster. He knows what spells are doing. I'll let you do a sleight of hand to see if you can get it off before he's able to react. Don't you make me counterspell the counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll counterspell the counterspell to the counterspell. <gasps> what, what am I rolling for again? One more time. Uh, sleight, roll of hand. sleight of hand to see if you can do it and get it off before. Um, can react. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a uh, sorcery point and make it um, but a, a, a subtle subtle spell. So there's no no verbal, somatic, anything. Just Okay. So we'll say that it's flavor then that you're like, excuse me, look right here before. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly the room is filled with a similar purple magic. 
to what once was there. I need everybody to make the save, which is a, a wisdom, wisdom save. save. Yeah, that's what I thought. There we go. Where was it? Fourteen. Seven. Fail. Pass. Did you fail on your own spell, Drew? No, no, no I failed. Oh, what's, ooh, it's a charm. What's your okay, DC? Because that was a now fi fifteen. Okay. It was a nat one, but I'm uh, advantage on charms. Uh, yeah. Well, it's actually an illusion spell. There is no, oh, well, actually, yeah, no, you're right. That it's yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. You're 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 right. Um, so that's a 17 for me. Any? Pass. Okay. What happens to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice having you back, Bray. <laughs> Summer, you are suddenly very entranced by this woman's spell uh you, something about her just oh wow. who's this new chick <laughs> does it have the intended effect of the person i wanted it to <laughs> the man looks towards you and says excuse me how a drow much like yourself <laughs> looks at you and says yeah. excuse me <laughs> for <laughs> He, we both have advantage on charm saves, yeah, Ren. I, I, I don't I've say that. But it's an elf. <laughs> raises his hand, and suddenly there are four of this man standing around you. Ren, you're very familiar with this spell as he turns into a yeah. mirrored version of himself. <laughs> However, before anything else happens, a sudden small speck of darkness appears in front of your eye. As a tiny, tiny dragon loses its invisibility oh, no. and stands directly <laughs> in front of you, floating right here, <laughs> and you hear in a tiny, tiny little whisper, <clears throat> it says, Pull me out of here, help me. Help me. Basically. <laughs> Summer and Sorfin are very... Uh, Entranced by Ren's magic. I just Before slowly... The man's just, eyes go incredibly wide I, seeing Sorfin. I have this dragon. I'm just going to slowly bring it over to me. Do you grab it? <laughs> Gently, just like... <laughs> Before... He There's raises, a tiny creature saying, help me. He raises his hands out... And the purple flames in the room fade and die away. You're all in pure darkness as you hear him yell out, We have an intruder! Before you hear the other three bodies in the other rooms wake up. I need everybody to roll initiative. <laughs> Aha! Can I had to start the fight. <laughs> While he was saying his thing, can I try something? Just yeah. like, because how didn't do anything? Yeah. What happens if I cast Dispel Magic on Sorfin? You can always try. Oh. As I, I hold this dragon close to my neck. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's It just says, uh, any magical effect, uh, if it's third level or lower, I don't know if it's a specific spell, um, but it would be a DC equal to the spell's level, um, and it's just like a spell check i guess so am i using my spell casting ability so it'd be a charisma check if it's anything above third level which i'm assuming the fact that he's reducing a dragon i'm assuming it's higher than third okay as you cast dispel magic into the air summer who the hell is this person? Why did I like them so briefly for a moment? <laughs> Before Ren, you feel ah, as if something bit you <laughs> in the hand. Ow. <laughs> Before now, we'd roll for initiative. Uh, and the four men that are around, because you can see, because you have the true dark vision, the four men that are around him are dispelled, as he no longer has his mirror images around him. But the effect on Sorfin seems to be permanent of some sort, okay. uh, or at least powerful enough to where your dispel magic did not affect it. Fair enough. Right. As <laughs> four of them disappear, Zania, you don't have dark vision, do you? You do. I That's right. do. I can never remember who. So Ren, Robert, uh, and 
No, I think it's actually just Ren and Robert are the only ones who currently can't see right now. Uh, as you see these other three people wake up wearing similar attire to what uh, the Weird Owl Man is wearing in these kind of navy-like robes uh, as they pull back their covers and jet upwards looking towards you. Uh, two of them female uh, with similar long curly hair. Uh, one of them a male with very slick-backed red hair uh, as if unwashed rather than clean and kempt slick back uh, all get up and begin touting magic of their own let's see what those initiative rolls are Four from summer. Summer. Four. aurora anima come uh, in 13. with a 17 for 13 aurora. from zinnia ren uh 17 17 okay Ow. 18. 18. I got your four. <laughs> I'm just so impressed with it that I want to leave that number up for the rest of the game. Pepper? Two. two? <laughs> what? Wait, 22. Two 24. Got it. I don't plug oh. I have got a two. I'm putting a two in front of a four. I know math. It's really hard, guys. <laughs> Wait. No, I thought you just put up two, and I was like, yeah, "How was are like, you a rogue with a two a rogue. initiative?" That's what I heard. On what reality are you a strength rogue? <laughs> I'd be shrunk. Oh, actually, actually, I'm I'm really bad at math. In that, I couldn't add two plus three together to get five. It's oh, actually good. Five. Oh, good. <laughs> Baby brain. Right. <laughs> As five. <laughs> I think I need to turn the music down here for just a second because I have combat music, not just RuneScape music now. Oh god, yeah, it's it's quite loud for some reason, and I don't know what that reason is. I have it so low on here. <laughs> okay, uh, right. So, first up, you see this man pull out all the magical stops before immediately being dispelled by Hao. And he stands alone. Ren goes, ah! <laughs> kind of like <laughs> sucking on his finger there as if My something bit him. Where Summer goes, what's going on? Uh, Pepper, you are in fact up first. <sighs> Every time. All right. Welcome back, sunshine. And I go to the, the guy right in front of me and I stab the crap out of him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go ahead and roll the hit with your dagger and your tail. Um, a 15 and a 14 plus numbers. They're plus sevens now. So what's that? 21 and a 22. Both hit. Amazing. Sneak attack on the dagger. Uh, and it's got an extra d6 because I leveled. And he's about to light up, I believe, as well. Correct. So, all right. <laughs> 22 damages to the, from the dagger. Okay. And the tail comes in at 5. 27. As an immediate reaction to the lights going out, this is home for Pepper. You jump up on this man's back and wrap your tail around the neck, pulling him forward as you just take both hands and stab the dagger into the side of this man's throat, which does actually cast light, being that you have the pumpkin carver onto his neck. So Ren and Robert can now see as this man has a near gash across his throat that lights outwards, uh, creating brilliant light as if light cast right on his throat. Pepper. He's <laughs> carved. The light kind of fades in and out as blood is pouring profusely from his neck as he is bloodied. It's like a techno thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, misty, anything else that you're doing? <laughs> Pepper, That's anything else you're doing? Okay. Uh, so it's actually going to go to Celine now. Uh, seeing you do that, uh, Celine is going to rear back uh, and see the other three people coming in through the room uh, and is going to cast Guiding Bolts on one of them. So, because she got a nat 20, uh, she has a big... <laughs> she has advantage on her first turn. So she got another nat 20 on the hit for Guiding Bolt. Okay. Uh, 
one of the ones that stands up, uh, one of the females with similar long curly hair, goes and pulls her hands back as if you see four of her start to appear, but they're all currently centered in the same spot as Celine throws back, like Zeus, a bolt of lightning and <clears throat> throws it through, and it shocks all of them before you feel and hear or smell nothing but burnt hair and flesh as that person falls down to the ground dead because of the crit from a level three guiding bolts. <laughs> Solid. Uh, Celine did a great job. How? Yeah, it's your turn. How is going to run up to the corpse of the individual, and he's going to lift his hand and thrust it into her chest, and as his hand is coated in blood, he goes, I want to hear about who you were. I'm going to cast Summon Greater Demon and make uh, a Balgura fr- conjured from all the whispers about this person. As he lifts his hands through, he pulls out the spirit of this person and a demon forms of essentially all the whispers of this person's life and everything that people perceived of them appears in front of Hal. And then the command I give it is slaughter the cultists. But you are a cultist. <laughs> <laughs> Roll me an initiative I'm saying, for fine, the Balgura. Slaughter the cultists of the Shadow Dragon. <laughs> Roll me an initiative for the Balgura. Uh, and I shall describe it. Uh, nine plus... Sorry, I gotta get Balgura stat effects. Can, can you tell? I didn't realize we were immediately gonna go into combat. Um, initiative is... Uh, so that's 11. Okay. Uh... Bound Zephusum asks how you did that. Um, it's a spell called Summon Demon uh, that I think it's, is a greater demon or a lesser? Uh, summon Greater Demon yeah. is a fourth level spell and it requires a vial of blood from a humanoid killed within the past 24 hours. How convenient there's someone dead right here on the ground. Yeah, so that's how it happens, Bound Zephusum. I mean, <laughs> did you put it in a vial? The heart <laughs> is technically a container. A Okay, fine. What is a I human pull out if a not vial, a vial. Say my cool line, slowly <laughs> drop it in with an eyedropper, and then I go, ooh, please. Um, I will say, though, as part of the spell, though, I can make a circle. I'm going to make a circle around myself on the ground because I can make a quick, like, circle thing that the Bulgura can't harm anyone in. Um, so I'm just going to make that on myself uh, where I am currently just in case it goes south. Then I can, like, swap people out. Um, okay, yeah. so... How jets out. So you are going to take one attack of opportunity from this uh, aristocratic weird owl. Uh, he does hit you, but he just has a wand. Uh, and so it sounds, it feels like a stick whack. So you only take one point of bludgeoning damage, <laughs> but you do get hit technically uh, before you run in there, reach your hand into the vial that is their heart and summon this demon as in the dark, suddenly light appears when Pepper stabs this man, uh, and you hear the words that House speaks, and this monstrous ape of a thing with this cloak mimicking just a shadow of purple light. Uh, shadow sounds weird, but it looks very much like uh, Sorfin does, uh, but it's this purple light that pours off of it, seeming to be in almost like words. Its face, a grin that seems to extend all the way out to its ears with a jaw of nothing but gnashed teeth going every which way inside. As it smiles, you hear like a... <laughs> as it begins to start its carnage, but that will have to come on its turn. Mm-hmm. As, uh, with that, how you currently stand in the circle of protection around this person's body, everybody else this is looking like a little scary demon, a little scary demon around you. Uh, Ren, it's your go. I'm gonna hold my action and back away slowly. Five or so. Okay, Ren. Uh, um, I'm holding my action if something goes to directly attack me, Close and I s- slightly whisper. To this little creature that said, "Help me!" Um, to <laughs> be like, "I'll help you," and then just like slowly, just like back away from the group and this demon, apparently. <laughs> right, Ren backs away and holds magic in their hand, ready to cast it. You feel resistance from this creature as you pull it. You're like, no, I said, I said I'll help you. <laughs> it's going to go to... Uh, as it's going to go to the wizard spell, or wizard's turn. Uh, so, first thing that happens uh, is the one that you just stabbed in the neck, Pepper, 
uh, is going to do its absolute best to try and not have you do that ever again. Uh, so the first thing that it does is it casts... Do, 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 what's the thing that I'm looking for? Do, 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 Phantasmal Killer. Uh, so I am going to need you... I think it's a wisdom save, or does it just come out? thematic components? Do I get an attack of opportunity if I'm casting the spell? Uh, yes, you will, but... Um... Okay, yeah, so I need a wisdom saving throw, but as it pulls back, uh, yes, he's trying his best to create something that is going to stab you very hard. Uh, you, as a result, stab it back very hard. Um, so go ahead and roll the hit. Let's let's get fun and thematic. Um, give me a negative on putting uh, plunging my tail directly into his mouth. You're going to call a shot? I am, and I'll, I'll hopefully disrupt the whole spell and everything. Go alien on this ass. Okay. Just so that we're aware, everyone. If we want to open the door to called shots, oh, can we do call the door will be open to called shots. Do we want to do called shots, guys? I cannot do it. What is okay? I am like, just... Can you elaborate what called shots are? Sorry? So called shots used to be a thing in older editions that was an optional rule. But basically, mm -hmm. it means if you want to start saying, I aim for his throat to attempt to do more damage, something like that, absolutely, that's fine. The enemies will do the same. And all that entails. I mean, I'm cool with it, but also I can see Drew shaking their head profusely, so I will say, I'm on the fence. I don't I will roll, and if it's big enough, it's run with a shot anyway. <laughs> You're gonna as a spellcaster <laughs> who can't physically attack. Is she right? Called shots are a bad idea. <laughs> Just say you aim fireball up his butthole. <laughs> I'm calling the shot. You fail that deck save. Ooh. So you're gonna go for the called shot? No, well, I'll just go for a normal hit, and then if it's amazing enough, you'll probably make it a called shot anyway. Okay, sounds good. So go ahead and roll the hit. All right. Big roll. Big roll. Sorry to take your fun, Alex. That's a big roll. It's not a. Tw it's an eighteen plus seven. It's a twenty-five. It's definitely. And what's going to be? Four plus four is eight. Eight. As you again stab into him, you hit him in the throat. This time you just go for the kidney shot, very prison style, shanking him in the side. As you do so, he begins to light up even further. Now a double beacon in the room. This guy is bleeding pretty heavily. Not doing too well at all. But it's doing well enough to cast Phantasmal Killer. I need you to roll me a wisdom save. Three. <laughs> Three. Okay. Uh, as you stab into him, suddenly in your mind, standing directly in front of you, is Salt. Salt has a dagger just like you do. He's flipping it around. This is a confident, quiet Salt. As he runs and charges towards you with the knife. You are frightened of this creature. And you're going to need to run away as fast as you can. And if it catches you, you're going to take heavy, heavy damage. I'm going to see if you take it. Do, 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 do. Okay. Nope. Um, so the end of target's turn before the spell... Okay, so it'll be at the end of your turn. Yeah, I was seeing if it was my turn or your turn. Okay. Um, sure. So, this terrifying vision of salt coming to kill you is lessened a bit as uh, you hear the demons fighting against these other two people in the room. Uh, as they do their best to create illusory versions of themselves, they all typically start with fighting with Mirror Image, and now there are eight of them in the room with you, How? They hold themselves in a defensive stance. However, one of them is immediately backing away the nearest one from the demon. Uh, as we're going to go to Zania, it's your turn. All right. Um, do any of them look like they're particularly grouped together? Uh, well, they're all on their own, but there are four of them by each other. You know this to be a spell that Ren does, and only one of them is real. You just don't know which one. They're within about 15 feet of each other and housed directly in the center of them. Oh, crap. Um, okay, well, I'm going to choose AoE 10-foot radius sphere. Okay. To like, uh, so I'm going to face in that direction and clap my hands together to cast Shatter. Ooh, I love it. Uh, in this room, in this darkness, 
you don't hear much except for Howl's horrible, horrible <laughs> summoning of a demon, but then a loud thunderous clap. Uh, they need a deck save or a con save? It is con 14. <laughs> cool. I rolled a two. AoE, it doesn't matter. Get your damage. Okay, okay, okay. And that is, oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. 12, 17, 20 total. 20. So, <laughs> this other person that you are nearby, uh, you <clears throat> clap your hands. Immediately, the visions around this, the multiple versions of it fade as this person holds their head on their hand. The Oguro picks that person up and looks over towards you as you clap once more. <clears throat> The eardrums of this person bursting, the Balgura about to crush that person with their hand before throwing it down and focusing on the other live person. You're not sure if you actually might have saved that person from a very, very horrible fate. But they are dead. Bah! All right. That is it. Okay. Uh, it's going to go down to... The Balgura turns and looks towards the other one. And walks, RP walks, because why not? Uh, actually, yeah, because you don't control it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the ball. I give it commands here. and stuff, but... You told it to kill, Wait, correct? Wait, would I... Um, kill can I cultist. command its like, actions? Like, I know flavor-wise I'm saying kill them, but can I choose what it does, I guess? No, it yeah, you just give work. it a command of like, do this thing. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah, I'll just have it uh, do its regular attacks and stuff on cultists. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. All right. It's going to run right up, uh, and it's going to have advantage on all of its melee attacks because, of course, it's going to be reckless. Uh, as It immediately leans towards this illusory person that seems to be the only one of the three that are left in here uh, with versions of itself. It gets down with its giant grin, hearing almost like acidy bits uh, from the uh, tongue as it leans forward towards this person and tries to just start mauling all four of them. So with this advantage, hits once, but then roll for a mirror image. One mirror image goes down. Hits again. He finds the real one uh, as he picks that real one up, very Hulk on Loki style, uh, by the foot and just throws it onto the ground, dealing... Uh, we'll go with nine. I won't do the rolls for that just to make it faster. Nine bludgeoning damage on this cultist here. Uh, and then knowing which one it is, he's going to try and hit again. <laughs> That's two nat ones in a row for the mirror image. Uh, so <laughs> this time as he throws him down into the ground, you can hear the bones of this wizard breaking as the Balgora slams it into the ground. Then the Balgora just picks it up by both arms and pulls until you hear the sockets rip out of this person. It is not doing good at all, but that person is barely, barely, barely up. How you kind of feel a little bad? <laughs> I don't know if you bad do it No, not at all. Zero exactly. sympathy. <laughs> uh, as it goes to Sorfin's turn, Ren <laughs> bites you on the finger again uh, before flying up towards your ear and whispers mm -hmm. in a childlike voice, but whispers, kill that one and it slithers kind of towards the main one in the room the one that pepper had been stabbing you know they did sacrifice people and rin's eyes just go white um <laughs> as rin's I'm not gonna, gonna be able to a... cast anything yet though as you're still holding waiting for something to attack you then i will not do it but mm -hmm. he does tell you he wants him dead uh, Friends eyes go to still do turn, go summer. white. Oh, of course. Why wouldn't they? Summer, it's your go. Um, I'm gonna look at um the main dude, and I'm gonna cast dissonant whispers, Ooh. and I'm gonna start seeing eat it, eat it, eat it. You're about to be defeated. <laughs> You've missed it, haven't you? Uh, and, I'm used and I can't give GFY for bard things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I got you, Bree. Thank you so much. And uh, that's going to be a wisdom save. I know it's a wisdom, but weird alpines. He is currently <laughs> very preoccupied with his stabbings in the kidney and throat. Too preoccupied to worry about your singing, so Dissonant Whispers works. Yes! <laughs> Three 
3d10. Oh, this is the problem. I didn't have enough d10s. A dice maker that works for it's been so long. It's been so long. Okay. Mm. Uh, 12. 12, okay. Do, do, do. No, As... that's wrong. That was hellish rebu rebuke. Can ignore that. I'm so sorry, guys. It's been a while. I was going to say, I thought Dissonant Whispers was less, but... I'm yeah, no, Dissonant... 3d6. Distance is 4d6. Is four oh, yeah. Three good minutes more. Might be more damage. It's 15. <laughs> yeah. Right then, instead, what happens uh, is you say, you're about to be defeated, as you just say, no, no, by such idiots, uh, uh, I'm, the shame, as he chooses uh, the route of, uh, no, I won't, I won't die before uh, Pepper accidentally kicks him in the face, running away from this phantasmal thing. The most embarrassing way that he could die is getting squished by a literal three-foot entity. Nothing glamorous about this, but this wizard dies to your insults as it loses its will to continue fighting. And, and you no longer see salts chasing you. With the dagger. But instead, what you see is a room full of Sorfin, as I need everybody who's in the room, which is everyone technically except Hal, because you ran in to summon a demon, to make a strength save. Sorfin, why are you going to do this to me? Sorfin thick, though. Shadow Daddy rolled in that 20. <gasps> Shadow Daddy. Shadow Daddy. Mm -hmm. But it's still a 19 because I have minus one strength. Is this the Aunt Fanny scene from Robots where everybody's just against the wall? <laughs> <laughs> what did you get, uh, Zania? Uh, strength, right? Yep. 17. 17. Ren? Rolled a 17, but it's a 16. Okay. Pepper? 14. 14. Okay, uh, Robert and Summer happen to be where the doorway is that leads in towards How and the Demon. So they are expelled outwards into that doorway against their will. There's no saving against this thing, but it's more just a luck-based strength save. However, yes, Zinnia, Ren, Pepper, and Celine are up against the stone wall here uh, as Sorfin becomes incredibly giant and forces you against the wall, even seemingly against its will. Uh, Y'all are each going to take... Uh, that is 18 bludgeoning damage. Jeez. Ow. As you are basically... The entire weight of a full dragon has pushed you up against the wall. Robert slides with his spear and shield next to you, How and the Bulgora. The wizard getting currently almost ripped in two by the giant demon. <laughs> Summer, you also slide in here and see a new face with How. Haven't really met. Hey, well, you met briefly, but hey, nice to meet you. As <laughs> it's going to go to Robert's turn. Robert is going to ask chat instinctually, does he help this demon kill the helpless person who's about to be ripped in half, or does he help his friends who are being squished by a shadow dragon? Chat, you tell me what Robert should do. And I know what Robert would do, but I, I'll let chat decide on this one. Help his friends, help his friends, help his friends, help his friends. Okay, so he's definitely Coup de gras! He's definitely going to stab <laughs> Sorfin. <laughs> so Robert then takes his spear and pulls back. He's going to two-hand his spear for extra damage, and he's going to charge into the side of Sorfin uh, and try and stab it with the spear. And when he does so, Robert falls right through Sorfin into the room and is coiled up like a snake. It's oh. going to go... To your turn again, Pepper. You are squished up against the wall. Sorfin, your butt's in my face. As you say that, you feel yourself fall freely from the wall. 
You're standing inside of the shadow dragon, seeming to have no effect on your movements. You're in pure shadow. I leg it to the big giant door of giantness. You rush to the near 10 foot tall steps just to get out of the room. You can see no, Sorfin. No, no, no. Wait, no, no. I'm going for the big 50 foot giant door. Yeah, yeah. I'm going through it if I have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, going through it. That's where the big tall staircase is, is on the other side ah, of the door. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so you rush in to where the 10 foot tall staircase is. Looking inside, you see Sorfin kind of swirling and twirling around in there, trying to find its way out of this room. What else are you doing? I am going to light a torch and try to open up that giant door for him. You are. The door is open. You are on the okay, other so side of the I'm door gonna, where there's a giant was, staircase. There was a door there. Since those fires room. have been lit, there is no door on any of these walls. There are only doorways. Yeah. I apologize. In no, that no case, um, you are now at the foot of a very tall set of staircase that each step is about 10 feet tall that goes upwards. Got you. I'll be like, um, this way! Sort of do like this, sort of like the signs of like you do with an airplane. <laughs> come this come way. On, come on. Yeah. Right. Uh, at the end of your turn, it's going to go to Celine, who. Would Celine, would Celine do something nice to the dragon based off of what we saw before and say, like, let me go? Or would they try and force their way out? Zania, how about you choose, fellow Tempest I Cleric? Think, I feel like Celine would be nice. Celine will then say, please, let me go! Before she also falls to the ground, seemingly unaffected by the shadow, and rushes over towards where you are, Pepper. Looking backwards, she does ready and hold a spell in case Sorfin comes for her, though. She will attack. Uh, it's going to go to your turn. How? He's a nice boy. He's a nice boy. What's the orientation of the room I'm in right now? So there was the dead cultist killed by Selene. There's the one that's being mauled. And then there's one more cultist, right? Yeah, there's another dead one on the ground. That oh, Zania, they're dead? Zania clapped that man. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm going to walk up to the one being held by the Balgura. Um, and for, like, flavor's sake, essentially have them be pinned to the ground. And Hal's going to lean really close over them and say, Here's what's going to happen. From this day forth, you worship the Whispers. <laughs> you will praise their name everywhere you go. You will convert everyone you see. You will remind everyone how merciful this day was. Am I clear? Two things. Roll an intimidation at advantage. And the but, second that person has already died. <laughs> <laughs> nice of you to speak to a split and half body like that. But <laughs> um, with that, what command do you give your Balgura? Um, and I'm going to double check on uh, Summon Greater Demon how it works, just to be super sure. Every turn they roll a charisma save at disadvantage um, to like try and break my... Like okay. hold on them, so that's the main the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he has a minus one. Yeah, and you can off. Okay, uh, it seems to still be listening to your commands. As what do you give it as your command? Um, it's an eighteen on intimidation. By the way, um, I am not gonna. I'm gonna. Does this person, based on like response, like do they look like anything has changed in their face after what I've said? They look like they are quite literally seeing a demon, because they are, and about to be ripped in half by that demon, because they are. <laughs> your plea, seeing that you seem to be able to control this thing, seems like a lifeline to them. They are terrified. I snap and the energy from the demon just vanishes into Hal's hand, um, and I'm going to dispel him. You can dispel it at will? Yep, it's a concentration. Once spell ends, concentration is pulled for the hour. It's just gone. Beautiful. All right. Uh, as as it, long as I don't lose control of it. You hear its arms pop. You think you hear even the clothing on the person begin to rip, which you're not sure what might be happening underneath before the Balgura, seeing that it's about to sink its teeth into juicy prey and fully rip him in half, you vanish the Balgura as the person falls, limp, arms seemingly dangled and broken at their sides, and just cries in front of you. I tilt their chin up, and I say, Praise the Whisperer. 
see what happens on their turn. Sounds good. Uh, Ren, you're currently pinned by a dragon against the wall. Ren has no idea what's happening. <laughs> um, we, we should this close to just dimension dooring back up to the surface again. Bring Sorfin with you. Help him out. <laughs> it's too big now. <laughs> I That's had a plan all it. along. <laughs> um... I don't know. Rin just stays there, I guess. Like, maybe tries to squiggle out of being pinned against the wall. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a strength save. Oh. Oh, no. Get the it's a nine. Honk. Go to horny jail. <laughs> <laughs> A nine from Ren. Uh, as uh, you try and wiggle your way out, essentially what's happening is it's not choosing to let you apparition through it, and it has dragon scales, and it's functioning like a cheese grater as it's circling around in this stone room, pulling you around very much like heavy sandpaper. Uh, so you're going to take some damage. No, that's cool. And while I take the damage, I'm going to uh, you asshole, I was going to help you! <laughs> Uh, you're going to take 12 points of slashing damage. Uh, and <laughs> at that, um, do you yell at it saying you're going to help it? I said I was going to help it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, uh, you still are physical, as is it. Anything else oh. you're doing? I'm just crying. You get a point <laughs> of inspo for not meta-ing and just saying, oh, I'm nice to it. I'm nice to it. <laughs> So if you don't have an inspo, uh, way to play. The I already character. had one, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, it's going to go down to the wizard's turn as this last one, a, a curly-haired young drow. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> of course I'll, of course I'll play your praise the whisper. <laughs> just don't, just don't let that dragon leave. <laughs> just don't. Uh, spends its turn pleading for help. Uh, as it's going to go to your turn, Zinnia. You are also pushed up against the wall. Uh, 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 can't. Oh, can I can't. I mean, I can't do anything, right? Do I also sink in? <laughs> what do you do? No, no, okay. I'm okay. I guess I try. I would. Zinnia would try to wiggle around, probably. I mean, okay. is she suffocating? She's suffocating, right? You're not suffocating yet, uh, but you are being pushed heavily up against the wall with the entire weight of a dragon. Oh, I would probably try to push against it reactively. Roll a strength save. Ah! Oh no, ten. Oh no. As you... Oh. <laughs> same thing happens. You and Ren are essentially cheese gratered around inside this small room there against the dragon scales. Uh, so you are going to take... 16 points of slashing damage as you rake along the rocks. Oh, jeez! Okay. Anything else that you're doing? I can't do anything. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's pretty much your action to try and break free, but you got a bonus action if you want to hurt it. Oh, I the only bonus action I have is my spiritual weapon. And I probably need semantic. Oh. Can I, I thought I was cheese grated, so I can't do the like. You're the... being cheese grated, but you could make an effort if you want to. You I will try. Do it. All Go right. ahead and roll a sleight of hand to see if you can get the semantic components off. Hi, Alex. <laughs> the six. <laughs> Six. Okay. You try your best. You all are very familiar with how Zania casts spells. You basically start praising to Nimbus. You say, aid me. Ah, before that's when you get cheese grated around like a cartoon. Uh, unable to get off your spell. Um, which, hey, again, same thing. Not choosing to do anything nice. Playing your character. Point of inspo if you don't have one. Uh, it's going to go past the Bulgar's turn since it's not them anymore. And it goes to Sorfin's turn, who slithers around enough to get its head towards the giant opening where Pepper and Celine stand. It pokes its head out through. Pepper, do you attack? Hell no. Celine readies I'd be another guiding this. Trying to attack if Sorfin chooses to hit it. But Sorfin looks at you 
and slithers by up the stairs like a snake, freeing Zania and Ren. It's my boy. You, however, see Robert still curled up in Sorfin, being lifted upwards towards the giant oh. staircase. I, if I notice it, I'd be like, Sorfin. You can do it on your turn. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, it's almost your turn anyway, um, as Sorfin just starts going up the large stairs. Summer, it's your go. Um, I can see, can I see Robert inside? Robert, yeah. Robert? <laughs> Currently, yeah. this large snake is leaving very much like the basilisk in Harry Potter, uh, with one small knot of Robert getting pulled upwards towards the stairs. I'm going to um, move out of the room and towards Sorfin, and I'm going to say, remember, Sorfin, we vegan shadows, remember? Vegan shadows. So can you can you go ahead and, and drop our buddy Robert? He didn't know. He didn't know that he wasn't meant to hurt you. You know what I mean? Just go. Come on. Vegan little, shadow. A little persuasion. I feel like we have infinitely more persuasion rolls when Summer's in the group. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, boop, boop, boop. I should probably invest in making persuade my persuasion a bit better. Um, it is 23. 23. Pepper... Basically, at the same time, you and Summer are like, no, 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 let it, <laughs> let Robert go, let Robert, hold, he's, he's not a bad guy, um, to where Surfin stops and kind of turns its head down towards you before begins heading back up the stairs. Robert, apparating through its body and boom, boom, begins falling down. It's going to fall down three flights of 10 foot tall stairs, so it's going to take Oof. 3d6 damage. Not too much for Robert. Oh, shit. If I roll two sixes and a three, it's decent damage. <laughs> okay. As Robert falls like a horrible slinky down the giant stairs uh, and lands finally at the feet of Pepper and Celine. Oh, before Celine goes over and says, Are you okay? We're no longer <laughs> We're no longer in combat. Sorfin is attempting to run away. We're in free action. What's everybody doing? Um, can I, can I get a spell off? Oh, yeah. Well, this is now free action. What's everybody doing is Sorfin climbs up and towards the exit of the giant staircase. I'm going to Eldridge blast that wizard lady. <laughs> the, the one that how, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, how I would. you stand there, uh, you see this one sit, oh, the dragon escape. Don't let before Summer runs up and very uh, Palpatine puts her hand out because this is kind of unexpected. Uh, how I will allow you if uh, you want to react to that before the blast goes off as Summer definitely begins doing a spell that you're familiar with. Seeing as how is familiar with it, I'd say how would probably be the only one to be able to react to it. Yeah, I'm going to step in front. They've given up. There's no point. Ugh. You're one of those kinds of people. No. Listen to who they're praying to. Anyone. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> you, you hear in a whispered voice the cultists praying out just say, please, please don't kill me, please. Please. I just, just uh, serve my father. Just help me. Seeming to whisper out, asking for help. <gasps> Shadow daddy issues. What? All right, <laughs> whatever. But if a brand new cultist of of these weird shadow creating dragons appear, then I mean, don't say I didn't try and kill her. Honestly, fair. Also, as a quick pause, because we have it. Let me find it. Do do do. Oh, uh, keep going. For some reason, I cannot find it. I didn't mean to pause, I guess. Um, yeah. You were there, right? With the. Before I left? You, yeah. We, yeah. Um, Whispers called me to you, specifically. Yeah, I've not. I, I mean, I, hear, I still hear the whispers a little bit, but. It's a bit 
foggy up here <laughs> lately, you know? They've filled me in. We can talk when... Yeah, let's talk. Hmm. Okay. I'm Mary Poppins up with the dragon to make sure he gets out safely. Okay. Did y'all just seriously let a dragon free and Ren's dimension dooring up to the book, uh, like the lobby where the bookstore is? And Ren's out. Ren's like, what is this? Uh, before poofing up as Pepper, you follow uh, Sorfin right. up uh, as a pause because I know what Summer is doing, How's doing, Pepper is doing, Ren's doing. Zania, what are you doing? I'm going to get to my knees and then slowly stand up and heal Cure Wounds myself because I'm hurt. I was going to cure. Uh, I was reaching to Ren too, but uh, Ren dimension door. So lost the opportunity to do that. Robert walks into the room kind of holding onto his stomach there, having fallen quite a ways, seeing you heal. Robert does the same thing. You both kind of sit down. He looks at you kind of like a, you too, before both of you begin yeah. healing yourselves. Him with a lay on hand spell uh, as the two of you are prepping yourselves. Pepper, you follow Sorfin up to what Ren will quickly see. Mm -hmm. uh, Ren, uh, Pepper, you see a roof here and a door. However, Sorfin longer terribly cares about doors with their great size. Ren, you stand in the bookstore quiet and you see the people on the streets out barely through this coarse glass window before you begin to feel the ground shake beneath your feet. Pepper, the darkness at the top of the stairs is immediately gone as Sorfin takes a great inhale of breath before Ren, you see an eruption of black shadows from the center of the street shoot upwards and out. All you hear from Ren is, are you kidding me? <laughs> you literally have a beep. <laughs> we can't no. use your accessories. <laughs> Amazing. As Amazing. You all have been down here for a decent time. It is right around dinner time at this point. That to me, the streets are quite busy. As Ren, you're not sure who gets hurt, but definitely some people go flying as a great eruption of black shadows flies upward. Pepper, you suddenly see the setting sun close to the night sky as Sorvin shoots a hole in the ground above, ignoring the door that seems to lead to another hallway, just pointing straight upwards. Sorvin shoots up before looking towards you, Pepper, and says, Thank you. Farewell, Sorvin. <laughs> or flying up into the sky. Ren, you see a black shadowy snake fly outwards and upwards at blinding speeds off to where you can no longer see from inside the building. You hear nothing but the cries of the people in the streets. People terrorized, not knowing what's going on, running off in all directions. Do I see Pepper? Uh, no, because you're not outside where the hole is. You can only see the kind of obscured okay. glass. If you want to run out, you totally can. I would love to run out. A tear falls down my my cheek as I watch um, him head off to the distance, uh, reliving the torment of being locked away and unable to control my own life. Pepper, you get off of the tail and sit there and kind of wipe a tear away before Ren. You rush out the door. The ding. The bell of the shop rings as you see people kind of scrounging, running away. Some people kind of caught on this black fire, trying to put themselves out. A few of them uh, seeming to go over towards halves of friends or family members or whoever they happen to be as this dragon shot flames up into the sky. You look up and see it circling and flying its way up and away. You look down, maybe about 30 feet down into the hole where there's a large door in the top of the staircase that leads down where you came from, and you see Pepper sitting there on the stairs, wiping away a tear. I give Pepper an eat shit and die look, and I go start helping uh, the townspeople that have now been affected by this. Ren, you rush over and do the absolute best you can. Being that people are injured, what are you doing to help the injured? Um, putting out fire, putting, like, just... I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know medicine. So I'm just trying to help you in do. whatever way 
actively asking people what do they need, things like that. Seeing as you don't know how to stop bleeding, you know your best thing is trying to help put fires out with magic. Uh, you rush over using prestigitation and just pick up bouts of sand and cover wounds with it to provide no oxygen to put the put the wounds out. This is quite literally rub some dirt on it uh, at this point, trying to do the best you can. It does work. The fires go quickly. They don't seem to set for very long uh, as you put them on the flesh and the wounds of those who need the help. Pepper, you looked up at Ren before, oh, just kind of a uh, hate you kind of grin runs off and you can no longer see what they're doing. Zania, you're down there healing with Robert, both kind of, you hear the cracks of both of your ribs as you kind of reset and align yourselves. Summer, how? Standing above this pleading brow woman, what are you doing? You can hear all of you, the explosion above from the dragon shooting out. Oof. Do you reckon that yeah. that was uh, Sofen eating some lamp shadows, or how strictly vegan do you think this guy's digging? I think Sorfin may be limit testing. Sorfin, mm -hmm. from what I've been reading, has been down here for a long, long time. But yeah. if, if what you said to Sorfin meant anything... Maybe Sorfin will keep to their word. But the dragon can wait. Come. Uh, How's going to walk over to a table? I'm going to take out the, the honey milk buns, the apples he's had, and like a like a little like flask. I'm going to set out stuff because Summer looks like super like hungry and just like worse for wear. And he's going to make just a makeshift spread like throwing books across the floor. And then he's going to pat one of the chairs and he's going to sit across from her. So you're currently in the bedroom, uh, and so there's these six beds around and two mangled bodies, uh, one that was struck by lightning and one that was thunderclapped out of their ears. Uh, and this other young drow woman who sits there crying as how basically kind of holds one of the sheets out and begins pulling food out for you, Summer, and just kind of does the pat on the side of the bed like, come here, join me. I'm going to take my hat off pull my old little penguin friend out. How's he looking? What's he look like? Uh, you, you look and you reach your hand down in and pull up by the flipper. Penguin McCool comes out as he's... <sighs> Alright. Not gonna lie. I peeked a little bit. I just peeked. I just wanted to see what was going on. That's and, natural. Uh, that's... Mm. <laughs> he just kind of has no words for it. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. As you magic up some smoke out of his cinnamon stick, see, ooh. Yeah, we shouldn't have come here. No, 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 no. Sh shouldn't have. We were doing much better where we were. Oh, yeah. Because where we came from was way better than this. It wasn't that. It wasn't a dragon. Yeah, I guess. Each location has its benefits and pitfalls, at least... I guess you're a bit biased, right? It was a bit colder. I like it that way. But I, I just, it, it's not because it's cold. It's because there's no dragon of shadow trying to do shadowy dragon things. I, whatever. It's gone. It's nobody's problem now. It went up the stairs. It's, it's up the stairs. Hungry? Yeah. Oh, yes. Before the penguin sees the spread of things uh, that you have put out, how... Uh, you have put out a very generous spell. Hang on, gonna... you got, you got any fish? Um, I've got dried fish of That'll rations. Work. I mean, it's been sure. Oh, How's gonna pull those out and looks to Summer and goes, you know, when the whisper said that you spoke to a penguin, I swear I thought that was like a, a metaphor or something. Yeah, um, some days it is. But I... <laughs> Fair enough. I'll be making my way back now, Ryan. Pepper, you slowly climb down these giant staircases, trying to get back down towards the group. Ren, you keep helping the people, but Zania, now you see Penguin McCool out, long time no see. You now take a moment, do you see that Summer is here and back? Robert is healed up, Celine is doing okay. There's a survivor of the enemies. It didn't have to kill them all, which I'm not sure if is necessarily good or bad since they seem to be bad people. But you're um. here and alive, it's a good thing. How's uh, how's everyone faring? Um, 
I can spend a few extra minutes to get all of us back to normal. Uh, and we're looking a little beat up. Summer, hello, I think. Hi. Summer looks like no. she's, she's about to die at any second. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay, give me one second. And, well, okay, I'm going to hug Summer as a welcome, but also cast first level cure wounds. Mm. And then that is for seven points. And then I'll take ten minutes to get my prayer of healing together for all of us. Well, I've doubled my hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty low. Ten, could we take just like a full short rest down here? Because there's nothing super pending. If the dragon's off in the horizon, can we just all chill for an hour? Or is it half hour? I can't remember how long short rests are. If you want to stay down here, you definitely could go for it. <laughs> Thoughts? Okay. Huh. I guess I approach the group while you guys are chilling. Yeah. I you all basically fun. start resting, start eating food in front of this woman who sits there on her knees with broken arms. Pepper, you finally climb all the way down uh, and come over towards the group. Celine has gone over to the woman with hurt arms uh, and casts a spell to mend her arms. It basically says, we can talk about this, but if you're going to be here, it doesn't seem right to before she essentially sets her arms back in place and heals her up. She just kind of is in to herself crying at this point. Pepper, that's when you walk in. Sunshine, what the heck are you doing back here? What happened? Why are you here? I mean, great to see you and all. I mean, what's our brother doing? So many questions. Start. Um, yeah, so... I have been kind of busy. Um, you know, getting stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fine. Um, and I cast it on yeah, just would like some help with some things. And uh, we kind of need, uh, we need we need to borrow all of this. And she oh. points, points to uh, pepper slash salt. All of what? Uh, you, you know. My outfit? Sure. And... Um, you know, what's inside it? Yeah. Wait. Are, are huh? you taking... What is that? What are you doing? Where, Summer, I'm so glad that you're back and the Castacon doesn't seem to have hurt you, but you could, you could use some porridge, but what do you mean? I oh, just, um, you know, Peppa, I... Uh, you have to <clears throat> you have to come with me now. Come where? Uh you know, here and there. And if I say no? Um I'm getting comfortable here. Yeah, um so we don't really get to say no very often. Um, or, you know, like, I guess we can say no to other people, but if, if Castigon, um, wants you to do something... Wait, wait. Do you yeah. want me, or do you want, like, this? Uh, I am super glad that you're back. Uh, you know, I miss Salt. Um, he's around, obviously, you know. None of us ever really leave, right? Um, but, no. uh, in, yeah... I, that, 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 more specifically. I mean, just for a little while. But I just got to enjoy it. Um, like I said, you can't really say no to Castagon. I mean, we can try. We've tried before, but then I'll, I'll, he I'll tell him no, 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 no. You cannot take Pepper or Salt away. Mm, no. Yeah, last time we said no to him, he dropped a house on our friends. This is what I was talking to you about before, how this is the rude man who harmed our other friends. If he comes, you tell him no. I know who he is. Well, good. That's why I'm the way I am. He... he... Okay. Oh, so you've met him. You've met a casting on before. I haven't met him. I'm a byproduct of... When Castagon grabbed the whispers, I changed. So, I know him. And every time his name comes up, it's very hard to hear you all. 
he is not liked by the Whispers. And I know he's hard to say no to, but yeah, I'm sorry, Summer. Um, so I did a little bit of, you know, I mean, I wouldn't call it soul binding exactly, but when you like, when you tell a God, you're going to do something, it turns out there's consequences if you don't do those things. And I'd super love for myself, my friend Zania and Robert and, and my sister, uh, not to die. So I'm not going to say no right now. <sighs> All right, Sunshine, what do I need to do? Do I have to go back into the box? Uh, I think I maybe sometime. But, I mean, we could always trade boxes occasionally. Yeah, you know how well that went last time. Jeez. Yeah. <sighs> so where's our annoying little brother? You uh, can't be just saying yes to this, Pepper. What, what do you mean? We can say no. Zinnia, help me out here. I... I don't know. I don't know if this is for me to not necessarily meddle with, but weigh in on. This is, this is insane. Truly. He is the worst. Looks also that bad, right? <laughs> no. I mean, he is pretty, pretty he is annoying. Salt is the best, truly. Wait, Honest so man. if it's better than me, Robert, then you get what you want, because he gets this back. I don't... It's... If I've learned ever anything while I've been away, it's that interactions between people are complicated, and there's not always a black and white black and white, right? There's not always the right thing and a wrong thing. There's a whole lot of grey in the middle. For example, what happened today? You know, there was a big old shadow dragon that was stored in a room for, mo for millions and millions of years. From birth. And from birth. Was created by Cultus. Is it wrong for him to be a little bit angry that that happened to him? Does that make him evil that he was mad? Castagon's kind of like that. Maybe neutral's a better word. <laughs> but no, he's, he he's horrible. Really he's the worst. Oh. I swear, if that little. If Salt screws it up again. Yeah. He's going to be hearing from me. Alright, so what now? I mean, I well, sort of. Odd summer. Now we eat, uh, and and he'll he'll come for us when he's ready. I grab one of the buns that um, how had been devouring. Might as well enjoy this while I can. Yeah. Hey, Robert has porridge. What are you Don't talking about with porridge? Stuff. This is not. I did not get to meet Castagon. Did you? Things that you did, but everything you described about him means that you lost friends. Compared with team. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you just have to not think about that. Um I mean it's hard because when you go to sleep and you hear his voice and then you think about it all the time. But then like in the daytime, you just don't think about it. And then and then no one else dies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, right. I don't understand the contractor agreement that Castagon has with Pepper, but one of my last memories of Castagon was him rifling through Gideon's dead body. I hate that son of a bitch. But Fortunately, is, hate doesn't kill gods. What is this box? What happens to Pepper? What? What? Why, why Pepper? Um, it's, I guess I've rolled poorly. Yeah. You are it. I have to give it. <laughs> why, why Pepper? What? 
why pepper, why summer, why salt, why the seasons. I mean, it is what it is in here. You know, sometimes we just have to suck it in and then sigh. Yeah. Um, I don't, it's again, it's not pepper that he wants at the moment. Although I'm sure um, once he meets you, there might be some things that he'll need you for. But it's more like the box, the vessel. The body, you know, he's a, he just needs to kind of... I think Sol just got too accustomed to it, and that's a problem. I mean, really. Yeah. I'll have a, oh. I'll have a chat to our brother. I'll have a chat, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. Sunshine, you don't want to be there when I'm having that chat. I, yeah, uh, I'll let you guys do that one internally. <laughs> Look, it's fucked, guys. I'm not going to lie. But at the moment, we just kind of have to do it. Or otherwise, we're all dead. Celine comes <laughs> over to Zania and says, like, Hey, I don't know who this person is. I don't have a dog in this fight. Um, is what this person, God, uh, do, I, seems like you all know a lot of them. Not here to judge. Should we... Should we... Do, do I need to be ready to fight? What's going on? Uh, no. He, no, he's she's okay. whispering like to Zania. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Celine. I, I'm still lost myself. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what, what the god wants with the vessel. The vessel that Pepper and Saul share? I don't, I'm good. Um, wait. I, I have more questions. I, I I'm not comfortable with just hand handing over, letting go of Pepper and the vessel vessel in the box is the body. Is that interchangeable? I, I walk over to Zania. Look, hun, don't 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 hun, don't worry about it. And I give her a big hug. I can't. She feels the strength of the hug. And then she just trails off. I can't not worry about it. Are you gonna be okay? I'm always okay. Pissed off and angry and disappointed, but I'm always okay. I'm still confused. I like um, a hug and walk back over to summer. We, um... Yeah. We're confusing. <laughs> Sometimes we get confused. It doesn't really... We don't always know what's happening to us. You know... One day, you wake up and you're a rat. And you know what? You just roll with it. Wait, what? And you then you're in a up? circus. And then you're wait, not. Wait, You're back again. But you're, not, but you're in. And then you're arguing. And next thing you know, there's blood. I mean, everyone has that kind of day, right? <laughs> Did you say, <laughs> wait, wake up as a rat? I do most days wake up as a rat now, yeah. yeah. Have you ever woken up as anything but a rat? Depends on how much alcohol we've had, really. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes Pepper wakes up and she's Pepper, and sometimes she wakes up and she's salt. And uh, this one time, remember that one time I woke up and I was Pepper? <laughs> oh, remember when you tried to fool us as Autumn? Oh, brilliant. Oh, jeez. Oh, you, had, you had salt going for days. <laughs> oh. oh. Zinnia instinctively looks to her, like, left and right to look for, like, Team or Gideon to talk about it, but they're not here, so she kind of just... As you look over uh, to the side, basically looking for Team or Gideon, uh, you see Ren kind of covered in dirt uh, and dried blood on his hands, walking in through the door. Ooh. We need I... to talk, y'all. We need to talk. Side note, there's, when is my 10 minutes up for my healing? Oh, uh, yeah. say right about now. Sure. <laughs> 17 points to everybody. Well, except we'll just us five and then Robert or Celine, whichever one looks more hurt. Sorry. Celine's pretty good. Robert will definitely All right, Robert. be happy I was going to say, if Celine it. has more damage than one damage, I will pass on the healing for Celine because I have <laughs> literally taken one point of damage. She does. She <laughs> did take 17, so she looks worse yeah, than Yeah, no. Heal, yeah, heal Celine. <laughs> Got it. How it's fine. I basically um, wipes right. off a little blood on the corner of his cheek. 
Summer is going to uh, like finish chewing the honey bun that she was having a munch on. Uh, she's going to get up and walk over to Robert and give him a big hug and say, I've missed you. Zania, so, you too. You too. Don't, just don't leave. Your problem solved. I take the hat off and hold it down for, for Penguin. Come on, bud. Penguin's like, I really got a choice, bud, before he boop, pops down into the hat. <sighs> Castagon, you ready this time, mate? Zania kind of looks up. Robert also instinctually kind of looks around. Ren, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> As you've just kind of walked into this blind, how your mind immediately, very much like when one of those flashbangs goes off, that kind of sound. Tinnitus. Your head. That's what yeah. that sound is called. Straight tinnitus. <laughs> I know because I have it. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, you're I so know exactly method, the sound. So method. Wow, it's so it. realistic. Wow, it's like I'm in the game. <laughs> As soon as you say Castagon, Summer, a sudden puff of gray smoke enters the room. Uh, as those of you who have not seen Castagon, so Ren and Hao would never have seen him physically, uh, Drow with greenish black hair, seeming to be wet and covered in sweat and lack of a shower, uh, vest and shirt with holes in it, very drifter in attire with a large gold amulet with five gems on it around his neck not at all comparable to the kind of shaggy clothes he has his amulet stands out like a bright beacon of wealth he himself however does not looks very ragtag and barely here as he poofs right next to summer hand on her shoulder and says you were supposed to take 30 seconds maximum. I, I said 30 seconds and then call me. You didn't call. I, I called like 50 times. There was a dragon situation. What do now, you, I didn't hear you once. All right. Like 10 times. I, I thought in my head, I was like, I hear, I hear like a little voice. It's like, ah, maybe that's Summer. Maybe, maybe she's. Children. Can we deal with this later? I'm I ready to know. let's do it. You, so we're understood. We're good here. Come on. He reaches his hands out before Robert where, slaps Castagon's where, hands away. No. Where are you guys going? Oh. Who's that? I don't know. Who are you? What? You don't you don't matter. What and you two. <laughs> you take longer than 30 seconds, Castagon. Jeez. <laughs> You're gonna leave Zania to die, just so you know. No. Why no. would Zenia die? Wow, Renan, you're uh, gonna your, you know, your skeleton <laughs> friend, your lizard fault friend uh, is here in town. Uh, we talked to him and points to how. Team is here? Your oh. uh, friend, Spade. Spade. I had to make a deal with him so that they wouldn't kill you all because they know you're here. But never mind. You're right, whoever the fuck you are. Unimportant. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have a rough time with that, but <laughs> you reap what you sow, right? Uh, don't touch me again. He points to Robert. That's a bad idea. He holds his hands out. Rats. I, I give Castagon two middle fingers up to the face. I like that Jackie can't do it. <laughs> she physically can't lift her middle finger. <laughs> Too wholesome. <laughs> I can't. Fuck you. <laughs> but she can you say it. Piece of shit. <laughs> oh, I'm so angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a straight up telegram in Morse code. <laughs> as uh, you start flaming off, Robert, uh, as he slapped the hand, Robert pulls out a spear and says, You will not touch these little rat folks. Um, they're all friends. As he stands in front of Castigan, I just. I'll bring him back before he 
poofs and disappears behind Pepper and Summer and grabs them by the shoulders. Pepper, Summer. Let's He's see. looking at you, kid. Oh. I mean, I didn't know I was meant to do a cool fucking camera thing. <laughs> you gotta do a cool camera <laughs> thing. Oh, no. <laughs> not, that's, that's not... <laughs> I was meaning say something cool, and y'all are like, okay, bye. <laughs> oh uh, okay, so something cool. Milking in progress. <laughs> uh, so with that, Milking in progress. Oh, Rubber is going to uh. try and charge at Castagon. But yeah, with that, if there's nothing set up, Summer and Pepper just kind of wave before Castagon away did, it not, did, the, did my last line not come out before i disappeared oh no you just no. were gone <laughs> oh yeah. yeah oh i was expecting a gfy from it so that's why i was surprised i said he is looking at you kid and then disappear <laughs> before the three of them disappear robert falls onto the ground <laughs> lands right where castagon was as he tried to drive his spear into him leaving zinnia ren how robert celine and young drow weird owl lady currently down here in this basement. Well, I guess Zania, we need to talk. I'm gonna kill that asshole. That's one of the last things I do. Well, let's try and not have you killed first. And then you look at her fist, and it's like the Arthur meme where they're like totally clenched, but she has lightning, like just like, ah, oh, fucking stuck in her fists. At that, that seems like a solid place to stop it for tonight. And I'm not a jerk who puts it on cliffhangers. I am, but that's not the intended purpose of this. Uh, so we have to pause because uh, Bree and Alex, and I told uh, the group that there was going to be kind of a surprise and thing that's going on. Bree and Alex, I, they got to take a little bit of a hiatus for a little while. Uh, they've got to do some LUD stuff and they got to work on it pretty hard. So Bree and Alex are going to be gone. Summer was already gone, but luckily came back in to help uh, guide this into, instead of just Castagon comes in and is like, hey, I got to have Pepper too. And it's gone. Uh, and got to experience the dungeon as well. So they're going to be gone for a little bit. So we're going to be short staff, but short staff with lots more guests planned to come on in as well. So at a pause to Summer and Pepper, thank you all for having a uh, last hurrah and giving us the extra episode before you have to pause it for a little bit. Our pleasure. We'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was too much fun this week with oh, yeah. Bree and I back with each other. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I just can't believe I don't remember who called it, but called that y'all would be tiny in the chat. That would be me. That was me. Oh, was yeah. it? Okay. I, it. <laughs> I awesome. didn't want to be meta with it when I had rolled that twenty or whatever. You're like, you hear little scurries by, and there's a tiny little door, and I'm like, Nah, Rin wouldn't think about that. Yeah, y'all all did a very <laughs> good job. You said the of thing, character I was like, knowledge. Ah. Yeah, a very good job of character knowledge separating from player knowledge tonight. So fantastic job all around uh, for everyone. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, we miss, we're going to miss you guys. Just shout out to chat who's giving us all the love. Yeah. Uh, we, um, yeah, we're not going for good. We'll be back. We have something really amazing that we can't share yet that we're like so close to just uh, hitting the world with that everyone's going to be like, oh my God. Um, literally in that voice. Um, yeah. Bruce exactly. Beaver. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, it also means we have to work really hard, which means it's slightly less time for playing D&D during work time. Which is yeah. like, you know, nerds. Ew. Nerds. We'll be back. Awesome. I'll be back. They will absolutely be back. Uh, and the reason that it's awesome for them to be able to come back is because chat always shows them so much love. So thank you, everybody. Uh, to end the night, we still have to do a giveaway. So about Whoa. 30 seconds left. Make sure you enter that giveaway for free? those infinite dice. Do it. Thing. For free. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Skywalker. Do it. <laughs> Oh man, how do Strike we? Strike him down. You'd like to enter my giveaway. I knew you. Now, what would. are you talking? About? 
Well, Sydney, I'm going to give you, I know you already have one, but another point of inspiration for not having a voice module or a camera changer. Uh, hey, now. It's you and me. <laughs> not please, no. That's lazy. I don't know what you're saying. I don't do anything with my camera, coward. <laughs> uh, it's all natural. All I don't right, like Bree. that your smile extends past the banana. Sorry. You do the giveaway. Since, hey, Bree, since it's, uh, you know, and, and Alex, of course, I want the two of you, I need some drum rolls to pick this winner since, you know. Okay. It's satisfactory <laughs> results! Satisfactory results! Hey! Congrats! Oh, I tried to email me. Fingers. Congrats. What? I'm doing a flash on screen. No, get, all the, get all the dice. That's what you win. It's coming your way. So make sure you actually <laughs> yeah. make sure you actually email answer me. the email so I can get it to you. Uh, and yeah, thanks everybody for coming and watching this week. Hopefully you've enjoyed some of the changes that we're doing, even though one of the changes is sad because we're missing people now. But uh, the other changes to the stream, uh, hopefully you enjoy those. And we'll see you next week for some more Red Wagony Any Goodness. Bye. 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 Bye.